Hello. Good evening. Good morning. Hello. Good night. Good afternoon. How do we like this setup? Do we like this better? Look at no, this. I don't, mm. like We're so close. Ego. Yeah. Jeez. So close. Gosh, I look it's so much older. Navy. It's ship, <laughs> shippy. It's like being in a, in a bunk. A three all, man, all three man bunk. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. I don't know if I like this better. I'm on the bottom. This is more Brady. Bunch. Uh, oh, you are the bottom. Uh, Wait, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, welcome. Hello. Good morning. Good evening. I already said all these things, but we're we're here. And we're going to talk about some things. Hello, Doug. Probably some serious things. Douglas is here, too. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, We've got Wombat, author of Treason Flight, Vengeance Flight, Mustang Driver. (laughs) Got Gonky, author of the coloring books. Those are marine novels. Sorry. Dude, your internet's fixed. High speed, low drag internet, Gonky. It's It's the only way. Buy a book. It's wide open. (laughs) <laughs> but not that the DOD approves of these things, just in case no. anybody's wondering. So there's that. Actually, in some regards, the they disapprove. But <laughs> well, this is why we can't have anything already. Tim, thank you, Tim, for Thanks, that Tim. generous contribution to the Gonky Mover Fund, Wombat. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about today, now that our banter is over and we have proven that we can speak like humans. Uh, the MiG-23 NT- preliminary NTSB report is out, and it's a doozy. So let us begin. This happened in Michigan, August 13th, Part 91, at an air race last show. On August 13th, about 15.15 Eastern Daylight Time, a MiG-23 UB, N-23UB, was destroyed when it was involved in an accident near Belleville, Michigan. The pilot and pilot-rated observer received minor injuries. The airplane was operated, Part 91, for an air show. The flight was performing the Thunder Over Michigan Air Show held at Willow Run Airport. Yep. The accident flight was scheduled to be the second to last act. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pardon. The accident aircraft was privately fl- owned, Russian-designed military fighter airplane that employed variable geometry wings that allowed the wing sweep angle to be changed in flight. It's powered by a single turbojet engine with afterburner capability, as God intended. The pilot reported that the flight departed from the runway 23 at Yip, followed by a right turn to a banana pass, a low-level knife-edge pass, along runway 23. Following the pass, he started banking the airplane and noticed that the engine afterburner did not ignite and the airspeed began to decrease. He brought the swing wings into the fully forward position, 16-degree sweep, to increase lift and began troubleshooting the problem. He was actively troubleshooting when the rear seat observer stated that they needed to eject. The pilot reported that he was not ready to eject and was still troubleshooting the problem, maneuvering the airplane toward runway 27 at Yip when his ejection seat fired and he was yeeted from the aircraft. He stated that if either occupant pulls the ejection handle, both seats eject. The rear seat observer stated that the airplane made a pass along the runway and the plan was to go to the left for another pass followed by a landing. He stated that the engine was not accelerating. He and the pilot had a brief discussion, began to climb up and gain altitude, they determined that they had some type of engine problem and needed to get back to the ground. He stated that they determined that they did not have sufficient altitude to make it to a runway at the airport. And he said they were compressed for time and needed to get out when he asked if he had to pull the ejection seat handles. He stated he could not specifically remember, but he thinks that he would have if he had. Uh, video evidence indicated that the airplane was in the left bank when the ejection seats fired. The airplane continued in the left bank, descended in the ground about one mile south of the approach end of runway 27. Wreckage path was 600 feet long and a heading of 35. And uh, fuselage section contained the tail surfaces. The engine came to rest adjacent to the apartment building. Remainder of the airplane was fragmented, distributed along a wreckage path. No reported injuries, thankfully. Uh, just the two guys that uh, jettisoned the aircraft. And hello. What is a rated observer? Is that like a real thing? One notch below Wizzo. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, tee it up. But too it, soon? I mean, Sorry. <laughs> one notch no, above Wizzo? But, I mean, I think above. What, what, your is that a real, I mean, is that a real, is that a real uh, type or a real rating? Yeah. Is that a real? I think it was just a statement. Like he's a rated, i.e., he's a pilot of some sort. Could be a one seventy. Was, the, was, he, was he rated observer. in the aircraft? I, I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Like, what's a rated observer? Because I mean, there is a because it's I mean the weight and because it's the experimental and it's a there is a type rating. There's a type ride, 
right? You have to get the right. well, experimental authorization. You have to get the, you have to go get a check ride and it's an FAA well, check they would, ride to fly this well, thing. Yeah, but then if the backseater had the type, they would have just said another MiG-23 pilot or rated Well, he's pilot. rated. They call him. Well, let's go back. Let's go look at Because they say he's a rated he's, observer, not rated not pilot. rated pilot. Well, he and was maybe observing. That's just he wasn't reading into it. Words mean Well, things. no, because he's observing because he's in the back seat. Words matter. He's, he's not observing because of, he's observing because this jet only takes seat. one one pilot to fly as the I, Lord intended. Dude, I understand that. But like, I'd never, like when there was another pilot but, in the back seat of the Hornet, I wouldn't call but, him a rated observer. It calls yeah, him a passenger in here. Another it says pilot. one passenger, one crew. I'm just asking. I'm, anyway. I, I don't know. So, so my whole, my whole thought process is like, well, how'd you know how to eject? <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm sure he's briefed on well, that. He's rated. Right. I mean, he's, even rated. If he's, he's even a rated if, guy. Even it's an incentive ride. You used to do those, right? Gonky uh, at the yeah. rag. Like I've done a ton of you would, you'd, I mean, maybe you weren't the one briefing, but you know, the PRs, I guarantee you briefed him on how to eject. And then you probably briefed him on how to not touch a dang thing in that plane. Unless you tell him to, am I wrong? This, yeah. Yes. This is I not, mean, a, no, you're this not is wrong, not man. a fam rider. You're not okay. wrong. I'm saying yeah. yes. Yeah. This is not a fam rider. This dude was a because I remember so you're saying he was rated this, in the airplane as and he was just acting. As that's what we're going to go in the assumption. He was an observer, <laughs> like a safety pilot, <clears throat> because I think other, right? there was discussion previously about this aircraft where they wanted him to fly solo and he couldn't because you needed two people in it for having hot seats because otherwise you'd be oh. throwing the seat out. So I think he always had to fly with two people. It? Really? Hmm. That's yeah, horrible, I don't think you, there was a. It had a solo mode. I mean, granted, it's, it's not exactly. It's Russian. A new plane, but that's no, a horrible. Old, design. But Russian, yeah, that is terrible. So, <laughs> that's a stupid what, design. What's the anyway? We digress. I think you were you're at fisticuffs when you land. <laughs> oh, <dear>. I think <laughs> somebody so is. Why am I here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, can you imagine your no. heads down, probably in the checklist, and the next thing you know. Your VA rating is 200%. You know, I mean, but you're a civilian, so you don't get anything. But we'll get to VA ratings here in a second. But you, like the yeah. pilot command, dude, the so aircraft dude, commander makes that call. So like Wombat saying, when I used to give rides, right? So if if you had wings on your chest, I, I would set the little handle to aft initiate. I'm like, dude. You got wings on your chest. I'm going to assume that you can properly judge this. But when it was like midshipmen's, uh, somebody who didn't have wings on their chest, I would set that thing to like aft solo. I think is what it called. I can't remember, but whatever the one solo, is, they... aft solo front both or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. So like they, yeah, yeah. if they pulled it, oh, it's just them. Yeah. Midship it's just people. Them. Midship people, Gonky. Midshipmen. Persons. I lived 20 years back. Midship dude. persons. <laughs> Yeah, he and I'm, his internet are from 20 years but, ago. No, his internet is is <laughs> wide saying, open. That joke hey, is. We've done. been on for ten and a half minutes, bro. You've got to give it longer he, than that. No, he had he Look, showed me the megabytes. <laughs> uh, but so the it's happened before, right? You've had the admirals Tomcat. that have punched themselves uh -huh. out of Tomcats. It became a Jag episode one time. Yeah. Uh, you've had the civilian French guy that yeeted himself out of the back of that aircraft you've had the t t6 texan that's a big one the canopy fracture system where he, he pulled the the, the canopy yeah. and it clamshelled you know jettison that this is more of a two pilots seeing the same situation and one goes i've got this because i'm flying it and one goes no you don't i'm out and then he forgets that he does it you know he's like well i would have if i had and he didn't remember that he actually had Meanwhile, the front seat guy, this is a lack of crew coordination. This yeah. is, uh, hey, we're going to make the decision to get, I don't know what their crew brief was, but we, we did not make a decision together. <laughs> that was the crew brief, dude. High five, bro. Awesome. We're at an air show. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. single engine considerations, right? I, I mean, yeah. climb, conserve, turn back to the field. Well, they did. Try so, to get into they, a, he, said they, he said they started climbing, right, to troubleshoot in the article. Right. And I don't, it doesn't say they had no power. It just said they didn't have afterburner or full military power. Yeah. So, you know, I the mean, jet's not doing regards, what you're thinking. That's no power. <laughs> well, but, yeah. Know, so, I mean, also, I mean, unless it's hitting the ground, death is imminent. 
there's a sequence of words that you say prior to bail out, bail out, bail out, or right, we eject, don't, eject, eject, right? Or well, we don't say over. that. We always say we talk about ejection. We use bail out for the command. Really? At least that's an Air Force thing. That's yeah. Air Force. Maybe it's in the, yeah. in, it's in eject, the eject, briefing eject. guide. Yeah. In the briefing don't guide, the word was, unless you mean it. We we talk we bail out bail out bail out are the three phase curtains, uh, but yeah. we talk about the ejection decision. Yeah, but the point is, there's you it's never, it. It, sh yeah. it shouldn't be a yeah. surprise unless total SA breakdown. No, it should never be a yeah. It, yeah, imminent. Like, hey, right. we're out of the window and in, in three, two, one. Okay, we're out. Yeah. yeah, this just looks like a bad crew coordination and a guy in the back seat who thought he had more SA than the guy in the front seat. <laughs> Well, lucky it's just an airplane that got destroyed. I mean, honestly, yeah, no dude, if like you're went into a, a, home, a house a apartment, con, I mean, well, not only that, what if the guy up front was like literally heads down reading a checklist and you know, the he, seat fires with like a thousand G's or whatever it is. I mean, you break your neck. Yeah. A thousand G's. <laughs> not a thousand G's. I, I'm a real fighter pilot. Slight I know it's not a thousand G's. <laughs> It's 500 G's, obviously. Dude, Everybody he knows. Is a in of in Russia, everything bigger, <laughs> <laughs> including he is G. The, the rocket is like SpaceX. It puts him in orbit. You know, he's it's just, right, he shows up at the ISS sure. all of a sudden. Yes. I every bring vodka for the ISS. Yes, I bring the vodka. Oh, yes. Why? Always an envelope. <laughs> oh, right. yes. Why? It's a it's a negative zero zero like you can go negative two hundred feet. Yeah. You could have died six weeks ago and still punch out. Yeah. Yeah. Catch up. We uh we have yeah. But seriously, but yes. if you're not in the right body position, I mean you're gonna get hurt. Oh yeah. I mean even oh, if you're probably the right I mean, body. dude, remember um well, the, what was his name? Advance. Uh, Splash told us that story oh, yeah, of going dude. off the catapult. Yes. He got a soft cat and what was it? An A4? Or, yeah. And they yelled it, to him, yelled it to him to eject. So he, this is a guy that was in charge of the Navy guy's advance and he pulls the handle and I remember him vividly being like, Commander didn't Coy. Fire. Commander Coy. He didn't fire. So he looks down and as he looks down, he sees the rockets fired. Yep. Yep. And he skipped across the... Uh... And I mean, he ended his career right. advance. I mean, there is no better pinnacle for that as a Navy guy, right? <laughs> Busmaster. Busmaster did that. Jeez. Anyway. <laughs> Poor Busmaster. He's a good guy. Anyway. Um, yeah. So anyway, crew coordination, probably still troubleshooting, not ready for the ejection decision. We almost kill some people on the ground. That's the problem I have is, you know, we're not. Well, I mean, it really was. That really was like feet away to, from being a, yeah. a another Miramar kind of situation. Sure. Not. Yeah. We're just but you know, if the guy it, in the so. back was like, dude, we're going to die if I don't pull this handle. Well, then, I mean, dude, it's. And he's like, that's not what he's. He, he doesn't. He doesn't remember it, though. Yeah. So that is that from the ejection? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's from a thousand G's. A thousand G's erased your memory. Well, I mean, well, I only know people that is ejected a, out of American aircraft, which are far less than a thousand G's. But yeah. they he, still have some he, recollection of it. Yeah, you know, the I mean, poor guy who owns it is a triple seven captain. So, you know, he's not like a 20 year old vertebrae. You know, it's not. Yeah, this yeah. is he's Tom Cruise. He's Tom Cruise ejected out of the Dark Star. He's going to have to pick up some green slips or whatever they have <laughs> to pay for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> His taxes okay. suck this year, right? <laughs> uh, well, well like, really good, actually, because that a write off. Yeah, it's a write off. Uh, Douglas. Yes, sir. You're up. So this is from The Guardian. Um, Ukrainian pilot Andrei Pilschikov, call of sign Juice, was killed on Friday when two, apparently two L-39s collided west of Kiev. And um, he was an advocate for F-16s being given to or loaned to Ukraine. Um, that's the tie-in that he was apparently a powerful advocate for f-16s and unfortunately will not get to fly them yeah it's pretty sad training uh training accident i mean i i read that article i didn't know that uh he had trained with the fresno guard guys which i thought was was pretty cool yeah, that's how he got his that. that's was how that, he got was his that when started. was that when fresno lost that guy in the back when they had I that don't, mishap? i don't know that... yeah that was yeah. a couple years ago and he I forget in the article when, when he went and trained with the, the Fang, but um, I mean, he must have been flying the Eagle. 
right? Maybe an exchange. I, I don't know what kind of training he was doing, but he was there long well, enough. Fresno for them went to over there. Yeah, Fresno went back over there. The, their oh. mishap happened over there. In yeah, the back of the MiG twenty nine. No, Sue Su, uh, is a flanker. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, it's sad, man. I mean, three guys gone. This, this guy, I, I've seen some articles, and the problem when you talk about Ukraine, especially on Twitter, is it brings out the worst in people. You know, I, I get it. I get it. You know, there's. There's so much political stuff around it. There's stuff, you know, I, I, we all have our political beliefs. We all believe, you know, what's right, what's wrong. But at the end of the, all of this, they're people. And, you know, whether, whether it's fighter pilots, people on the ground or whatever, people losing their lives. I have seen some very stupid takes. I saw one of them I even responded to on Twitter where the guy said, you know, these idiots, and that's his words. He said, these idiots are crashing into each other. Why do we want to give them F-16s? And you look at this and you go, well, first of all, slow down there, cowboy. Every country in the world that has that does fast jets for a living is susceptible to this. It doesn't matter whether they speak English, Russian, Chinese. It doesn't matter. Fast jet business is just dangerous. It's, 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 not, it's not easy. So... What happened to him has nothing to do with any of the geopolitical stuff. What happened to him, we as fighter pilots go, that sucks, nickel on the grass. You know, we lost somebody that was decent. And Juice was a good guy. I've talked to um, some people, intermediaries. We were trying to get him interviewed. In fact, back in, back in the fall, we never could get it, the timing and all that to work out because there's a lot of approval process and stuff. But I was trying to interview him because... The dude was a was kind of like us, you know, advocate of aviation, advocate of his country. He loved his country. He loved flying fast jets, and he wanted to see his country do well in the air and on the ground. And you have to respect that. Doesn't matter what side you're on, you respect the hell out of that because that was, you know, his passion. And I, I I'm with him. I I, th I think it's awesome. The mishap itself we won't speculate we don't know i mean you know i don't know what what their process is but they i mean running jets into each other is part of training it is the danger of training it is the danger of doing this job the americans are not immune nobody is immune to stuff like that it sucks it sucks when you've got a guy that's high level but that's not something that you know is, is just because they're ukrainian and then the final part i'll say I don't think this guy, and I, I've seen this article too, I don't think he wanted all the the fame. You know, I don't think he wanted to be called the ghost of Kiev because that was a myth that was perpetuated by a lot of stupid people in the media that they just ran with it because it was good for morale. But this dude, on his own merits, was a, a good dude and a badass. And that's what we should be thankful for and burn the piano, throw the nickel in the grass, you know, honor a fellow fighter pilot and not try to add all the, the lore to it as well. Yeah, man. I mean, he, he even says, you know, Hey, I'm not the ghost of Keith. He's like collectively, he's like, we, like right. his, him and his squadron mates were, you know, were that legend. Um, yeah. Which I mean, <clears throat> I've never met the guy I've never met the other two guys that perished as well, but kind of like you said, mover guaranteed, those guys are just trying to execute the flight schedule, man, to the best of their ability. They're 100%. just, they're looking out for one another. They got families, they got friends. And honestly, those guys, you know, at the level they were training, they could care less what was going on outside in the outside world, politics, yep. whatever. Those guys were just trying to do the best job that they could do. And, you know, I, I'm not on Twitter, <clears throat> but we have midairs in the U S all the time. I mean, relatively speaking, you know, I mean, we have midairs. I mean, I almost had a midair. That was, that was my almost ejection, <laughs> you know, was a midair. Um, and to, you know, to think that, and you know, when people say, and I saw, I saw some of those, just from reading articles, you know, people saying like these clowns can't handle F 16s. I mean, that's pretty, that's super ignorant to be honest. A hundred percent. I mean, it's, yeah. any, any fighter pilot can handle, handle an airplane. It, it's all in the, in the training. Tactics. These guys just, 
like you said, accidents happen. I'm sure there were mistakes made, but I mean, that's the nature of the business. I've never had a perfect flight, you know? So well, he's, he's, he, he was an advocate for his country in getting new equipment. I'd be doing the same thing. Dude, course. if I'm flying, we do the know, same I thing. Mean, <laughs> uh, right. You know, I'm, the, I'm going to be first one standing on somebody's desk going, Hey, give us better equipment to, to fight this war. You can't fault him for that. No, you cannot fault. You might be able to, to fault the higher echelons where money changes hands and stuff like that. But the dudes doing the mission, they're doing it for God and country, man. That's it. I mean, that's, that is what it boils. And the, and the dude or dudette next to him. That's yeah. it. And that's, I mean, honestly, man, that's on all sides of the war. I mean, I, you know, I don't have a ton of combat experience, but my combat experience, I was just trying to help the guys next to me, you know, like I was trying to help the guys yeah. on the ground. I was trying to make sure that my wingman was doing the right thing. I could care less about the politics, what was going on outside the cockpit, because you're called on a task to do. You're scheduled to do it. The government pays you to do it. And you, you do it the best of your ability because if you don't, your friends might die, you know, and that's, that's what actually hurts, <laughs> you know? Yeah. What do you think, Wombat? So, no, I, I agree a hundred percent. Um, you know, there wasn't one mission I flew, whether it was training, combat, anything, um, in my time where I gave two dams about the politics or why some politician or some, high up military guy made the decision for us to be there. I just knew that my friends were there and I wanted to get them home. And that was it. Um, you don't think about that stuff. You don't care about this. I mean, you know, when you're in port or you're back, back home, not on deployment. Sure. You know, do you talk about it? Of course you do. I mean, it's, it's affecting your lives and the decisions that are made. And, um, but in the moment, like, you know, it's, one of my buddies once equated it to like, and I'm not an advocate that athletes and people in the military are, are the same, but you know, they equated it. We were talking about this and he goes, well, how, you know, somebody asked like, well, it's like an athlete who has a broken limb or something, but they're, they're still playing. You know what I mean? You're, they're not thinking about the pain of that. They're just, it's adrenaline. You're just, you're there to do your job. You, you'll deal with that stuff later. And, um, you know, to me, there was no worse thing than leaving somebody on deployment. Like that's, that's a fate worse than anything. I would have rather died myself, frankly, than have somebody else not make it home. So I agree. You know, I think it's ridiculous that, and this is the problem with social media. I mean, it's, it's great because some idiot from New Jersey could write two books and sell them. And that's awesome. Cause 20 years ago, that would have never happened. But the negative and the ugly side of social media is, you know, you get these people that just think they know it all and think they have the right answer. And it's like, dude, that's somebody's life, man. That's somebody's mom, dad, husband, wife, you know, kid. Like you can make your post, but like, well, what, what we forget about it as Americans, we as fighter pilots, right? To Wombat's point, right? You'd rather not, you'd rather not leave somebody behind. Dude, there's nowhere to leave behind. It's there. It's in their backyard. Sure. I mean, that's Wolverines. You know, I mean, yeah. you're losing the 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 wives, girlfriends, brothers, all that stuff. They've, they've got hypersonic missiles inbound trying to attack their training location. This this was like yeah. a couple of weeks ago, you know, where the F-16 guys, the first cadre were, ha were hanging out. They were trying to lob missiles at them. So I don't I mean, this guy is is feel I'm sure he feels isolated. You know, he feels like, hey, what, what's the rest of the world doing? Why are we fighting this by ourselves? And he is going to do everything he can. And he's well-spoken. So they put him in front of, you know, others, interviews, media, stuff like that. Because he's a fighter pilot fighting for his country. Yeah. I don't, I don't care what your politics are. Dude, you pick up a rifle, you get in the jet, you do what you have to do to save, you know, your homeland. And when you die in the defense of that, even if a training, even if it's a training mission... It's an honorable death. Yeah. 100% put I mean, the flag on the coffin. Yes. 100%. It doesn't death. matter what they were doing. It's a training incident, but he was trying to make his country better. And, you know, him, him. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So. That being said, man, I mean, it's just another, it's just, it's, it's just too bad that there's just so much uh, death and destruction going on over there right now. Yeah. Agreed. 
All right. Well, Douglas, what's next on the agenda? We got, uh, let's see here. Marine Osprey. So we, we've talked too much about mishaps. I mean, any questions, Doug? Yeah. <laughs> Can we lighten the mood for a second? Like, yeah. yeah, let's do that. Let's Somebody do that. said yeah. it's a joke. Yeah, I mean, let's take, it, take <laughs> a minute a before we uh, around here. <laughs> have... Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Renee says, would Renee any of thinks... you have flown the Concorde? Why did it Ooh. fail? Thank you, Renee. Yes. Oh, yeah, of course, course I would have. Flew an E2, man. There's nothing I wouldn't have <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of the same, but the wings are way straighter. <laughs> why would you fly? Why would you? Why did it fail? Money. Yeah. Cost cost per seat mile, right? Yeah. How they measure it? Money yeah. and wasn't money. it like kind of ahead of its time a little bit? Yeah, yeah. it's super expensive to own and operate, and they yeah. couldn't Much like own. yourself, Wombat. <laughs> Someone say, "Hold on, I'm gonna." Oh, I almost got. I'm gonna get this fly, man. This fly is my nemesis now. Uh, they could only go supersonic, man, over water. So, hell yeah, as you should, as the Lord intended. I'm still gonna. Get Am this I reading this, again. Douglas? Are you I, reading? I got this? it. I got it. Thanks, Reed, MF. Mother. Um, yeah, MF. Mother. Reading that the MiG-23 has a minimum eject speed of 90 knots to say <sighs> possibly a factor which made the backseater go. Thoughts? No. Is that I mean, a look at the number? T-38. I mean, hey, well, yeah, get... I mean, you've got 080 seats. I mean, that's a, nor that's a normal yeah, thing, that's but Is he they were nowhere like, near 90 knots. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I'd... yeah. I mean, if you're 90 yeah. knots in any fighter. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> if, if you were 90 knots, you were, okay, that's a valid decision. Yeah. Good to, you know, engines choice. rolling back. Over Hold on, don't say any fighters, Not... bro. Like, you could well, do that for it. <laughs> well, Charlie, in with their no regime. Engines? Well, they had engines. It, if engine. the engine's rolling back engine. and you are at 90 knots, dude, I'm out. Give it back to the taxpayer. See you later. Well, that is Have the seat that. starting to fall out from under you. That feeling, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, no, I know that feeling. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I know I'm you do. well aware of that feeling. So am I. <laughs> Which is yeah. why mover, you lost me at single engine the way it should Possibly be. A factor, yeah. You know, I'm not, honestly, yeah. He, I mean, I mean, if he doesn't even remember, if he doesn't remember, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe he just got yeah, scared. Yeah. Next, uh, Delta Perigee. Thanks, man. I'm an aerospace student at the University of Tennessee. Nice. Go Tigers. I'm not going to say, yeah. I was, Sorry. <laughs> I'm considering a career in military aviation, preferably fighters. Any advice y'all can it. give? I don't know where to start. Go to the guard and do it. Don't get a felony. Don't get a felony. I'll it's the same you. advice. It's always the same advice. Make them tell you no. Don't self-eliminate. Get yep. good grades. Score well in your AFOQT. Get some flying hours if you can. Be a good dude or do that. Make them tell you no. Yeah. Questions. And like Mover said, if the nice thing about the guard or reserve is you can kind of pick what you're going to fly. If not, if you go the working man's route like I did, it's a uh, dealer's choice, which makes it exciting but stressful at the same time. Hell yeah. And Wombat, Wombat did the same thing. <laughs> so, Wombat, Mover, what that... is happening? Are you 1v1? Do I need to put this banner? Up? Hold on. I've got a whole banner for this. Hold on. <laughs> Dude, I, hey. You he's, still... <laughs> he's in a two circle with an insect. There's my light. <laughs> Man, this is not. This is serious stuff. This is not good. This is not good. <laughs> what happens when you have a poop chair? Flat spin headed out to sea. <laughs> I want to kill it right on the camera. Oh, dude! So that way, it just sits you're reading there. this one, Mover. One of one of Gonky's favorite um favorite viewers. Oh, Mover, do you want to Goose. You guys Ouch. remake Top Gun 1986, the original, which. One of you is Mav, which one of you is Goose, which one is Iceman, and why I think is we all know. Goose? I think we all know that Mover's attitude oh, makes him Iceman, hands down. Yeah, I'm the better pilot, too, so that makes sense. Yeah, sure. Maverick is gawky. Why, why, why get it? But he says, I'm Goose. Why do I get to die? Who said you were? Or oh, remaking why is gawky he doesn't goose. die. Yeah. Does that mean Rip will say, why are the wings coming out in 30 years? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Sorry, Rip. Yeah. No. Well, I guess I'm Goose, uh, and I guess Wombat. I guess you. You're Maverick. Someone's got to play it, dude. Wombat, I got a question, dude. Hold on, we got to go back to the, the 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 straight screen. Why does your shirt look like I'm losing my vision? That's it's like it's a Technicolor. Fine. Yeah, it's fine. Does it not um, look like the camera's having some issues? No. 
No, dude, that's uh, that's, uh, that's the print. If you had one of these shirts, you would know. Thank you for the support. Dude, the Where rotor blades on the E2 blur things. They it's do. Accurate. The... <laughs> it's accurate. It's accurate. See it? Plus the vibration. The vibration. All right. <laughs> I got you. I okay. mentioned the radiation. I don't think you uh, can remake Top Gun, man. It's perfect. The first uh, one. Let's do two more, and then we'll get back to the serious stuff, Doug. Can do. It's too much fun. It is. Fun. I remember Gonky. This is from Vulcan 03. I remember Gonky saying he was scared of heights. How does that work when flying, flying fighters? God help you if you eject. Close your eyes. Yeah, Close that's why I've never I ejected. Low. low levels. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am actually Helicopters. afraid of heights. And uh, somebody commented uh, on on that on my video, and he said like they did a study and found that's actually not uncommon. Like mm -hmm. I have, I have no problems with you know wings strapped to me, but. You will not catch me. Like when I got to go on the roof to get my kid's ball, I get very angry because I scare you. Buy another ball. You're like, <laughs> you're right. There's, oh, a, right. there's like a whole. <laughs> so would you have like, freaked out and buy another house? No. Uh, no. For good reason, you would. I mean, it's the wings are spinning. Realm. I'll I've never know now. It's sold. It's I've been gone. in a helicopter, it's dude. I've, I've been in a. In a have Hilo. you been in a Robinson helicopter, though? No. In the front seat. Actually, you would have been in the front anyway. Rip would have been in the front. You'd have been in yeah. the back. Yeah. I mean, dude, I've flown an ultralight where, like, I'm literally, if I look down, it's the ground. And I felt okay, but I'm just not cool with walking around, like, being in a stadium at high seats and stuff. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Really? It's yeah. even that bad? You don't like being in yeah. a stadium? No, dude. God. That's just, he's being a snob. He doesn't want the cheap seats. No. <laughs> no, I, I don't. <laughs> I like the it. elite level of a two marine book. So Sorry. what did you do on the carrier? What do you mean? It's not that high off the ground, bro. 60 feet. Well, it's and it's water, water, dude. You're not going to die. I mean, the ship mm, will run you like over. It, but... When you're throwing <laughs> Goose's dog tags or your own dog tags, as we learned in the last comment, that's off the He was side. 30 feet. Actually, yeah, he was 30. He was in the he hangar bed, dude. dude. That's, that's like a, a high dive. Amount. That's yeah. higher than your roof. You had to yeah. jump. What did you do in OCS? Because you had to jump off the high platform, or at least an API. Remember when we had to do that? Dude, we did the that parachute. We... Mover. This, did we? We did the no. You and I. You and I got out of it because we were too heavy. <laughs> That's a fact. So, so, Mover, did they? Were you part of the drag? I know. Thank God. <laughs> uh, where they drug you behind an F one fifty? I mean, they they legitimately yes. had it. You parasailed behind the F one fifty advance. <laughs> I have done that. Uh, Dude, I busted my to. ass so hard when you landed you're because it's still dragging you. Like they release you and you're just like it's the launch. Out. It's the launch that's scary because they tell you you you're running as fast as they can, and the dude punches the truck and she literally just yanks you in the air. And uh, we saw so many people get hurt. Where I was like, "Oh, dude," and he's like, "Hey, if you're uh, two fifteen or heavier, I'm like, oh yeah, that's definitely me, Done. <laughs> dude." I don't care what I weighed that day. There was no, no. scale. Yeah. Nope. In, yeah. In the Air Force, they do that at water survival too. Yeah. So our water survival is they drag you behind the boat and. Oh yeah, Which is kind of yeah. fun. It's kind of and fun. then yeah. you float around it's in the typical Air Force. The, they also the do that in Cancun, Mover. It's <laughs> well, it's you not... know, I mean, <laughs> TDY. Well, <laughs> let's let's not get into water survival because that was the stupidest. Thing. Like, what? Why do I need to be in a helo dunker? If I'm in a helo dunker, don't they have people for this? Don't they? Like, all right, I ejected Ask from my, my buddy fighter. Who this is a crappy survivor. day. You heard well, that story, right? Yeah, yes. we were IPs together, man. Yeah. That cracks me up. I'm just okay, saying. That's what you get for being a volunteer. No, Mover, it's they a free for all. People. And a Hilo, dude, it's a free for all, man. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, Hilo, right, back man. To... It's every man and woman for himself. And I promise you, that crew is not thinking about Mover. <laughs> the fighter Mover's pilot board. That's yeah. not, Mover. it's not their Mover's priority. Always... Douglas. Yes, sir. Um, Marine Corps Times has news that the oh, Marine geez. Corps has identified the pilot who died in an F-18D crash at Miramar. It was Major uh, Andrew you Mettler. It. You can skip it. Yeah. You just... Call hmm. sign Simple Jack. Another training accident. No. Really? Wow. wow. Another yeah. Simple Jack? Yep. Man, that... Yeah. That's... Mm. Yeah, I talked about this on uh, the, the live that I did a couple of days ago because mm. it just yeah. happened, but they didn't have the name released at the time, and I'm sure they're still doing the investigation, but it's basically nighttime, San Diego, 
training. I mean, I he was flying a D by himself, so I was it is the, water is, is the rag was it over- closed? No, he crashed in the in the uh, he crashed just north of San Diego, man, and like in the hill country there. Oh, yeah. This says uh, it was based at Beaufort, so this is a Beaufort. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so they were there doing some sort of. Yep. Yeah, I uh, yeah, but, it was. Yeah, that's too bad. I mean, we'll just have to wait. He was on the lieutenant colonel list, so he's probably up for skipper. Yeah, I mean, we're we'll just gonna have to wait for the uh, the report to come out. I mean, who knows? I mean, I, yeah. wombat's flown around there. I mean, it can be challenging with with weather and nighttime. You know, if he's working marine even layer. a minor, yeah, marine. The, that's what I was gonna say. The marine layer and uh, with the elevation, maybe even if you're working a small prop, man, you get a little. Yeah, yeah, nighttime is. I'll tell is you, man, and, and I I don't want to speculate. I really don't. But something that was always on my mind, whether it was hornets, I mean, even in the E two, but you know, because we were just up the road, or T forty fives, we went out there a ton for CQ debts, right? And yep. uh, always in the back of my mind were all those homes, always. And I mean, yeah. whether that played a factor or not, I don't know. Um, but dude, I I can't you crashed see here it tell midnight. You, you crashed yeah, it. Yeah, so I mean. That's, oh. dude, that's rough. That's rough. It, it just, it was just on, yeah, agreed. It, it's just something that was there. You know, you knew it. Out in Fallon, you're like, what am I going to hit? A meth jack? Like, sucks. But in Miramar, you know, places like that, Virginia Beach, things like that, like, you think about that. So, at least I did. I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll just have to wait, man. See what, what comes out of it. I mean, the Marine Hornets, I mean, I love the Legacy Hornet, but they're getting old. Yeah. You know, stuff happens. They're yeah. well past it. Beat up. Well past the de- design life, hour wise, I'm sure. Even yeah. when I flew it, we had a couple of like these. Our that Charlies were, were. Yeah, we had some that were 4G limited, man. You couldn't even, like, yeah. the <laughs> only thing you could use them for is instrument flying. Like, you couldn't. That's the center anymore. barrel, right? When the yeah. center barrel g- expires or goes out yeah. or whatever, it runs yeah. out of time. They can, yeah, you know, we, had, they can, we had one that you couldn't go over Mach 1 on. Really? Yeah, couldn't couldn't fleet? break the number in the fleet. Um, I learned that because it was in the the logbook that apparently I didn't read closely enough, and then I busted Mach one off the bow. <laughs> <laughs> so let me rephrase that: we had one you weren't supposed to go over Mach one. Allegedly, allegedly, you could still do For it. Legal just reasons. Fine. You just aren't. For legal fine. reasons, this is a joke. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it happened. I'll admit right. to it. I screwed up. It was. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, Mm -hmm. but that I mean, that's what we're saying, man, is like, you know, as these things start to get older, like they try to put these control measures in. And at the end of the day, it's a fighter plane. You're a fighter. You're like (laughs) doing some pilot stuff. Right. So let's circle back. You as a pilot are asking for newer equipment. Always. Like, dad, I want a new car every, every, (laughs) all the time. So. I we mean, just never uh, got it because we weren't in the air. I, yes, mover. We're all the same, right? All yeah. fighter pilots are covered. It from doesn't the same matter car. what the fighter pilot is. We okay. all want the newest, shiniest, doesn't, fanciest jet. Doesn't matter where we're from. Especially if you're fighting a war in your backyard. That's true. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right. Let's keep the sad thing going. And then we'll stop for some, some comments here. The Marine Osprey set up. Oh, dude, bad day for the Marines. Yep. That's oh, it. Um, three that's... US Marines dead, eight in the hospital. They're injured in an aircraft crash on Tiwi Islands near Darwin. 23 Marines on board. 20 were flown to Royal Darwin Hospital after the crash. Three lost their lives. There's an effort underway to rec- recover their bodies. Wow. I'm I'm amazed that anybody survived. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Dude, have you? I mean, that's that's to me like usually you get zero, and that's so that's. Dude, have you 22 that thing? I, like you said, mover the the bl- like that the blades are massive. I can't imagine them coming <laughs> apart. Right. Oh. I mean, the frag going everywhere. I mean, yeah. we need we need to get like Casmo and then a Osprey guy on the channel sometime, and then just yeah. talk because I would be curious because I don't know anything about Ospreys. I'd yeah. be curious in like emergency procedures. Do they auto rotate? Do they turn it into airplane mode and glide? Well, like, they, I don't know. I, so I've flown with some Osprey guys recently, and it's very interesting to listen to them. Um, 
what at least I got from the guys I've flown with is that they pretty much think of it like a helicopter for all intents and purposes, unless they're going really, really? to range some player. So my guess is, is it's something, you know, vertically, not what we would think is fixed wing guys. Um, it's very, it's very interesting, but um, yeah, really I'm cool stories. So. Is yeah. it pretty robust? I mean, are they, are they still? Oh yeah, it's like built walking? hard, but it's still, I mean, dude, there's a lot of moving parts. I mean, it's not a helicopter, so there's not, you know, the, the everything put together by one Jesus bolt. And then it's, you know, if that two comes apart, bolts. sorry, I don't know. I don't fly <laughs> helicopters. Jesus so you got one on um, your side. Now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. I give them a lot of credit, man. That's, I mean, well, in training, right? somebody who has flown a plane that is a death trap, I give them a lot of credit. That's replacing well, the cod, right? In the Navy. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. yeah. Now, one bad in the training pipeline, uh, somebody going E2, they go, they fly both TH, whatever, the, the training helicopter, and then don't they go to Corpus also and fly the... I don't know. You're talking if they're Osprey guy? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. Mm. Honestly, I don't. Because we didn't really the Air have Force it in the Navy when I was in training. Yeah, I think That's it's true. a helo track in the Air Force, if I'm not Like mistaken. steering through? So you got to... It could yeah, be a like through and know, through helo track in the Navy. Fort Rucker slash Novasil and then MB22 out of that. So you fly the Huey and then somebody will correct wow. me. I'm probably wrong. Yeah, oh, no. I'm sure there's 40 comments already uh, about how stupid. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Dumb. yeah. Uh, You're not even real bad. Yeah, but anyway, let's, but joking aside, <laughs> yeah, it's too yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah. It's, I agree. It sucks. Dude, it always seems to happen this way too, right? Like, doesn't it? I mean, I know that's cliche yeah. to say, but it's like Comes you get threes. them in waves. Yeah, and they're all, I mean, and you know those guys, they're in Australia. You know, it's it's probably a good deal. Yeah, you know, sure it's it just is. like, eh. Mar Margot Robbie. <laughs> that's every woman in Australia. So I'm glad that that is your stereotype for every <laughs> Australian woman. Way to go. <laughs> we love Margot our Aussies. Oh, my God. <laughs> in me? Australia. <laughs> oh, oh, call that a knife. Wow. Australia is great. Uh, Can't wait to go. Here, out. I got one, Doug. Thanks, Tom. Mom, thanks. Hello Steve. from the UK. I should be in bed, but work, but I'm <laughs> watching you guys. Do you have any comment on the US DOD admitting the TR3 really exists? Isn't that a British car? What is it? Yeah, that's a Triumph, isn't it? No, it's Terminator mom, 3. It's a movie. Had one on I was born. It. On Douglas, what what's a TR3? TR3 is a. Um, Triumph sports car. Yeah, I was going to say it's no, a car. In, in, my in this context, of the <laughs> in this context, I have no idea. Yeah. I'll need to go Google it. <laughs> Doug, what would you say you do here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the car guy. That's well, literally uh, my job. Go one your three. Low, what you Black found. Black Manta, reputedly, reputedly a United States Air Force tactical spy plane. Nice. Oh. Can we shoot things with it? Not spy. And Tom, the pictures are the, all pictures of F-35s. So this is the first time I've ever heard of the TR-3 myself. Yeah, we don't get out much. If it's not in DCS, Gonky doesn't know it. That's <laughs> not... <laughs> oh, did I, did I just spoil it? Gonky secretly it's just a DCS off, pilot? That's just never, blew the whole lid off blew my... The lid off of it. <laughs> Shut down the channel. Shut it down. Uh, See ya. That's why he's <laughs> Goose. Yeah, exactly. Scott Wombat, did you win the war down there? I saw a fly a while ago. So did I. Oh, he's he's hanging out. He's getting tired. I'm, uh, you just you got to wear, <laughs> wear, wear him down. Yeah. Wear him down. Uh, the rate fight. You just got to be patient. Exactly. <laughs> you, you fight him hard enough, he'll just do something stupid, and that's when I got him. Bored, scared, tired, or maybe you're Ice Man. Yeah, maybe. yeah, there you go. He's got you. you got to fly in your ice water. Okay, get definitely not labs. making Thank admiral you. in the navy. That's for sure. Trust me. Thank you, wow, Ghetto. Thanks, Ghetto. Several months ago, a Blackhawk crashed and a train exercised into an intersection here in Huntsville. It was caught on a ring camera. I saw that video. It's very hard to watch. Is there a place to go to see what happened to cause the mishap? So, used to be, I don't know about the Army, but they've gotten away from this. I used to be able to go, and they had like a library. The Navy safety, they had a FOIA library, and the Air Force on their JAG site where it was like all the mishaps and stuff. And I don't know what changed, but they stopped doing that. And now the only way I can see, and I don't know what the army used to do, but I'm assuming it's similar. Now the only way to see it 
is if like military times, air force times, army times, whatever, post it. And then they'll post the link to the PDF. And that's usually where I find it. So I, I don't know what changed or how to find this stuff. You guys know? No. Okay. I have no, no comment man. on that. The shaking I have no. my theory, but I have no comment. All right. Cool. Uh, Anthony Cornelius. Thanks, says, Anthony. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, look at look. That's you that's recognize 16. that jet? Yes. Look at that jet. It's fighting Falcon. The Viper. <laughs> All right. I get it. Donkey, this is for you. The Cluterus. It's funny how we can find him on this channel, but nowhere else. Uh, Wombat, if you could add missiles and guns to an E2, how fast would you shoot mover down in an F-16? <laughs> One turn. If you, dude, if you put it in that turret thing up top, flat. it spins around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude, have you guys ever done a flat turn? I don't think you have. So talk to me when you have. What? It, it would be like a flat turn. Flat turn is a 180 degree turn with no aileron. Wrap your little brain around that one. <laughs> That's something you do regularly. Dude, Pluto would like be like the uh, the last friend. the All last star That's a raptor. Yeah. All rudder. Pew, 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 it pew, is pew. the most vertigo inducing thing <laughs> that I've ever I, done in an I, airplane. I actually <laughs> have do, done it in the helicopter. Ooh. That's not a it's called a pedal turn. Does it take half of the United States airspace in about 30 minutes to do? Because that's the thing that really gets you on it. <laughs> Dude, those things sucked. And then the moles loved it. Hey, can you just, just flat turn? Like, <laughs> like, you know, I got to land you on a ship. Right. You don't want me to have vertigo. <laughs> so Eric says, question for a wombat. Thanks, Eric. Do you think Look the C2 would make a good fire bomber? No. Maneuvering and useful uh, loads. It's so maneuverable, it's just like a Hawkeye's maneuverable, but um, so I, old. I think the load and then also just the time on the airframe. I mean, they're so beat up from the ship that it, it would, you'd see the wing spars starting to fold. And I mean, we've all watched those videos. I don't, I don't think there's better planes for that. Firefighting, man. I mean, they've had some mishaps lately because they've yeah. been busy. A lot of fires. We actually just in this parish just had a someone unfortunately die in a fire. You know, brush fire started and they ended up in it, their house wow. and stuff. Uh, it's just terrible. Um, all right, back to the uh, show. Well, that the fly we're up to be... speaking yeah, of yeah, fire. I don't know. I'm you trying did a to show of force. <laughs> <laughs> Were you ready? Right. This ready. one was um, Broward Sheriff's Department. Sheriff Gregory Tony announced the deaths of a Broward Sheriff Fire Rescue Captain and an adult female civilian. Um, 841 Monday, August 28th, freight, flight crew was dispatched to a medical call and declared an emergency, apparently. We were trying to return to Pompano Beach Air Park, crashed into a small apartment building. Two crew members managed to escape, and um, Terry Jackson died in the crash. Terry St. Jackson. Jesus. I can't speak to this, man. This is helicopter stuff. I watched the video. I saw the, and, yeah, the video is well. So I, we're not going to play the video because it's yeah, hard to watch. Yeah. But you you watch it and you watch the flight aware track and you know they it was a return to base. So the thing is trailing smoke, something in the aft, you know, section of the engine tail boom. There's drivetrain components all back there, and eventually the tail snaps and sure how anyone survived is to me a testament to the pilot and the engineering of that aircraft yeah you know it is a I mean, fixed wing guy like, what what i guess i don't know anything about helicopters but why didn't they just land just land, right i don't know what the indications are he may not have had fire indications like i don't because it depends on where the fire is, you know, where the, like anything else, right? Depends on where it is contained that you know you have a fire. It's your trail so, I mean, smoke, right? Hidden. I mean, something caused them to go well, back. You can't look back there and see, hey, um, you know, unless you're doing turns or something, who's telling well, you well, that you're trailing smoke? Well, but yeah, what I'm about yeah. saying is they knew they had a problem because they were heading. They knew they had a problem. They did. The point. They did, but so, it's just like anything else, right? It, you know, it depends on severity and what you're dealing with as to yeah. whether you put it down right there or you take it back to the field and as soon as possible versus practical sure sure so we don't know and it's kind of silly to speculate at this point until the yeah. ntsb does their thing we don't know all i know is i saw a video i am 
grateful that people Everybody survived because when you yeah. watched it the first time, it looked like people were going to die in the air and in the ground. And yeah. it, it landed in an apartment with people in it. So yeah. like more than just the person that unfortunately died. So it looked like a pretty modern, like a newer. It was, EC1, it was an Airbus, Air, Airbus helicopter. Yeah. Those are super nice. Like they, yeah. some of them, you know, can have all kind of it's autopilot like features Airbus. and stuff. Are they the ones they make here in the States? Uh, Down in Airbus there, helicopters? There do they do they make Mobile. helicopters? I don't, in, I don't know. Mobile? Mobile makes something. I know they make airplanes, but not... Hey. I, I don't know if... Yeah, anyways. Yeah, it looked like, it's a, a very it looked nice, like an, yeah, it looked like an awesome helicopter. It's a very nice helicopter. And once that tail's gone, you're along for the ride. Like, there's nothing... Yeah. Like that's it. So wide yeah. ratio of zero. No thanks. Oh yeah. I'm gonna hard pass uh, that. Well, when everything is still together, it's good. But when stuff yeah, falls well, apart, I'm amazed. I, I just I'm continuing. Yeah. I, well, and I think Gonky and I kind of have the the typical fixed wing. You know, not necessarily with this, but it was with anything with helicopters, right? Like I remember joking as an also on the ship, like, what's it like shooting like an ACLS? Yeah. After the ship, like if you screw it up, you're just like, hold on. Back it up. Back up a couple feet. Okay, we're yeah. good again. You know what I mean? So, like, that's the natural, know. like, you know, whereas, you know, like, with fixed wing, you're always moving forward at some some yeah. velocity until you're it, not, you know? So, that's the question where it's like, well, my brain immediately goes yeah. to, like, dude, just put it on the ground. But, but again, there's a lot of variables. I'm not second-guessing this guy. I'm just, that's where my well, fixed wing is. The same, it's the same thing, right? It, it you, you have to go based on what you know, what's the sure. severity of the incident, and where is equipment going to be? You know, am I going to take, Yeah, that's. Am, yeah. am I going to take something if it land as soon as possible? Okay. Here's that field. But if not, yeah. I want to get back to where there's emergency how, rescue equipment where, where I can. How close do they get? Do you know, I didn't, I didn't see that. Did, did it say, uh, what? Cause it I know they took off far. for a call and then they started coming back and that's when they had, that's when they lost it. Yeah. I don't know, but I mean, you're only doing. 100 knots, 110 knots. Well, and you know, and the one thing I'll say, because I'll, I'll devil ab, des, devil's advocate this too, is a lot of people are like, oh, you know, never pass up an airport, never pass up a landing spot, oh, yeah. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that's BS, man. Like Hawkeye with a hydraulic problem over Iraq. I should have put it down in Iraq and I decided not to. I was going back to the ship. It almost killed me. But there's no way I'm putting that thing down in Iraq because we would have never gotten it out again. You know what I mean? This is, this is, you know, Iraqi freedom. Like, you, so I do agree with you, Mover. Like, where the equipment is, is a way of saying the same thing. It's like, dude, there's external forces like guiding there your decision are, You know, yeah. and I mean, but, and I told that crew, I was like, you may have to bail out, but I'm pointing us back over the Gulf. Like, we're going back to the ship. I guarantee you, if they knew they had a situation like that, sure. but you also yeah, have to understand they're in Hialeah. They're in Hialeah. Look, know. look at, dude, it's all, it's all urban. Like oh, yeah, if you yeah, put yeah. it down somewhere, you're more than likely putting it down in power lines and cars. Sure. And, sure. and those are things, like I said, my brain's not wired to because it's, I it's never trained in urban them. areas. It's an, it's an assumed risk. I think the H one thirty five is it, is it two engine? Is it twin engine? Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah. yeah. All right, Douglas. Uh, but my point being is, you know, you may be thinking you have more time than you did. Sure. You know, that's sure. all. Yeah. Um, let's get back to the, the kids at happier, home. Happier questions? Yeah. Something happy? You got we did that. that one, right? We already did that one. Okay. I still yeah. don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> Dang, in the gonky chat room, wants to Thanks, see John. up close. Your cam should show them well. Okay to do. I don't understand that last sentence. But. Can they want to see some you? helmets, but. You know what? Because it's kind of a sad night. Oh, I see. I got it. <laughs> there they are. Just zoom in on it. It'll freeze frame here in a second, and you'll be able I to. Can't. <laughs> it's not, dude. That joke is dead. It's never dead to me. Never. You know what? Now we on make next... fun of you and your fly. John, That's fine. John, on the next <laughs> on the next QA, man, I'll bring him down. Um, I'm kind of connected yeah. to my apparatus here, and as that means he's not wearing pants. That's what that means. <laughs> That's what everybody's <laughs> there. So to speak. <laughs> as bad as as. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do that on a Q and A because, like I said, I've got all kinds of wires. Look at and stuff. He's got. Look at his camera. It's, it's great. That's awesome. He isn't wearing pants. Gonky, Again, you never wear pants. You never. Donkey's blushing. 
He's uh, never blushed before in his entire. I've never seen him turn red like this. Because it's He's funny. Like my shirt. Wombat, <laughs> it's it's funny what one bad says. Not true, but I I will bring the helmets down. Sure. Here, right? Sure. Hey, the <laughs> Gonky's about to start getting a whole bunch of donations from exactly. some single moms in his area. <laughs> yeah. Wrong channel, ladies. <laughs> but twenty dollars is twenty dollars. So <laughs> <laughs> spoken like a sailor. <laughs> uh, it's your turn in the barrel. Next, we have Brian. Doug, go ahead. Yes, sir. This is the only live I go out of my way to watch. I'd love to see y'all do Mover Ruins movies on the Great Santee. Oh, great always movie. Always a sucker for yeah. Robert Duvall, Duvall movie. And <sighs> Flying in Always 1989. Oh, I've never All seen right. Always 1989. I don't think I've seen that either. I don't, I've never even heard of that. I have seen That's a Great good. Santini, though. Mm. What? Yeah. Always 19. I'm surprised I haven't said There's. They made some good cars in 1989. But, they like, did. Not <laughs> great, but good. Shut Corvettes up. weren't so great back then. <laughs> Nothing was. That's the year of my IROC, bro. 89. If you knew him, you would know that. Dude, T-tops. T-tops. I know you have a Mustang. Broken. broken no, dude. It's an IROC. Hey, what's faster, uh, your IROC or the Mustang? Oh, Wombat's Mustang is faster, but what's cooler? Definitely the IROC, dude. You the fact that it hasn't for? rusted apart at this point is actually fairly a testament to General Motors in the <laughs> 80s, frankly. Dude, given how you're a family man now, I'm surprised you even have that. It's yeah. the last bit of glimmer of hope he holds on to <laughs> is what it is. He just sits in it and makes engine noises in his trailer somewhere. No, no, she runs. She runs. Oh, but she I don't runs. run. I don't use it. I don't take it. Anyways, I have not seen Always 1989, but The Great Santini is... I actually just discovered that movie like a month ago, and it's, I love it. It's amazing. Yeah, that I Rock brings back so many memories. <laughs> it does, dude. Uh, are fox. we caught up? Doug, hey, can we, we put a one more <laughs> here, here for that fox? Andy Cornelius, question for Gonkey and Mover. Did either of you know Waldo with the VFA 20, yes. 204? Mover, I think it's time for another DCS flight with Ray. I have not talked to Ray in a while. I hope he's doing okay. I haven't checked in with him. I need to. Uh, Waldo yeah, we is the Waldo. one that took my position at 204 when they were like, hey, your kidney thing, you're gone. And I'm like, I hey, I want to stay. And they're like, we already, yeah, we already hired Waldo in your position. And I'm like, what do you mean you've already hired Waldo in your position? I was here first. He's a good dude. Still is well, a good dude. Yeah. That's what you meant. Allegedly. Yeah, I think that he was at I don't know, he was at FedEx back then. I don't know what where he's at now. I haven't talked to him in a couple of years. I saw a picture of him with Farley and Worm at Tailhook. Oh, okay. Cool. Remember I told you that? They That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Farley was barefoot. All right. <laughs> Next. I checked and the name of the movie is always and it was made in nineteen eighty nine. So when you go looking for it, oh. leave off nineteen eighty nine. Is it a is Will Wheaton in that? Steven was directed by Steven Spielberg, starring Richard Dreyfus, Holly Holly Hunter, John Goodman, Brad Johnson. I don't see um Will Wheaton. Sounds like a chick flick. Yeah. Is it is it a uh, aviation type movie it or is. really Romantic fantasy drama in which a de recently deceased expert pilot mentors a newer pilot while watching him fall in love with the girlfriend that he left behind. Oh, it's a romantic oh, triangle with a dead guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, that sounds bad. No that way. sounds worse this, than Iron Eagle. This will be a good movie to watch with the wife. That's saying something. <laughs> Yeah. So All right. Next. One of our questions is a segue into the next um, the next topic. Do you want to just go ahead and do that? All right. Let's do Jim Norton's alcoholism. Oh, we can do that. Who is everyone's favorite comedian other than Jim Norton? <laughs> Who's got? Jim. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Mine. Mine is Wombat. Thank you. <laughs> mine is also Wombat. Wombat yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you knew what Wombat stands for, you, he's it's pretty tough. Very few people know. You can't. Yeah. So they want to do a contest. We got 690 views. Nice. What they has? Do a, they want to do a contest online to try to guess my call sign. And it's funny because I asked the guy, I go, well, that's great. But like, <laughs> nobody's going to win. So I think, <laughs> well, it's like, that's the we worst should contest have somebody. in the world. Guess gonkies for the contest. Ooh, Nobody's gonna uh, guess that either. <laughs> See how and then we have to cancel. Cancel. <laughs> and that's, yeah. cancel them. No, yeah. you cancel whoever guesses it, they get canceled. Ooh. 
It's it's like ultimate game. So all I have to do is publicly guess it, and you guys cancel me. No, it's dude, online it's, anymore. Look, it can't like be anybody in the time. know. It can't be anyone in the know. It's got to be. Yeah. You know, but nobody's ever. Well, nobody can guess, say it. Who's good? Who has the legitimate authority to say it without getting canceled? Nobody. That's true. You can't, uh, you can't. I think there's probably certain. You, no you are the only it. person that can That's say true. your call sign, and you're not going to guess your own call sign. You know it. It's cheating. I'm surprised he still remembers what it stands for. <laughs> of course, I remember every day. I morning. have never forgotten. I love telling people that story. Oh, my God. It's one of my favorite. It's one of my, my favorite, favorite that thing made to tell it people. through everything. The too. shock like, factor just yeah. is so the, great. All of the call signs that had no business being canceled. No business. You're like, that might offend somebody. Hold on, let's take it off a plane. Oh yeah. my God. And then I here's Gonky taxi and by. And you're yeah. like, you're like, if you knew, <laughs> like if you had any idea. Oh, dude, yeah. Uh, I had a captain, Navy captain, who discovered what it meant. And he's like, I'm I'm surprised. In fact, he refused to call me by my call sign. He called me by my rag call sign. What was and your rag call sign? Rag call sign? What was it? What? It, it was cruise sock, um, but croc. <laughs> well, that that is actually it's sock legit. for short. Sock for short. So that's right. we'll have to talk about this offline, mover. <laughs> but when you're you don't know what a cruise I'm, sock is, I have no idea. We had our own, we had our own the cruise places to stay. We didn't. Well, do no, you guys like share to do a with spot? where you're staying? It's... Was it very stiff? No, look in the Air Force, Wombat, the girls and everybody, they all come together and they camp together. And there's no, no need for a cruise sock. That's a good point. That's a good point. But in the real man's Navy, war fighting. I don't want to. Oh, please. Where's the banner? Where's the banner? <laughs> oh, geez. All right. That was, that, is right. That, was my, that was my call sign. And that's why he called me uh, sock. And he's like, that's I funny. He can't. wouldn't call you gonky. No, do I know I just, this Navy captain? You probably do. Yeah. Does it surprise me? No, it wouldn't surprise oh, okay. you one bit. Perfect. One bit. Hey, cool. There's people listening. No more inside jokes. No, that's good. So, I feel left out. What, cruise sock, dude. And probably 690 people do as well. That's well, that text him. Just because I can't right now. Okay. My, I'll message. Look I'm not at reading your text. No. Can, your can we can we go to the next topic, Douglas, and use the D stew as our segue? I think it's probably time. <laughs> I think so the FAA too. says 5,000 pilots lied on medical records to hide conditions that would prevent Thanks, them Steve. from sitting in the cockpit. 600 commercial, one failed to disclose sleep apnea, many veterans' thoughts. And the, let me get that. Okay, you go ahead. You clicked it and then I, I clicked getting, it. There we I go. I was getting rid of it, yeah. yeah. So uh, 5,000 pilots are suspected of hiding major health issues. They're getting whoa, whoa, that whoa, hair. Whoa. Go whoa, back to go that back, hair. Go back. Up, up. What is this? What? In... Which part? The picture? No, no, no. You guys haven't been in an airliner in a long time, that... but that's exactly what it looks like. Is that AI is that flying that thing? Two FOs with... This is one of... <laughs> This is one is our head is paper. The that's their well, they're wearing their hats, so we know who they fly yeah. for. <laughs> Big D. So as I understood it, the... Mother uh, D to you. Do that, does Big D wear the hat in the cockpit, too? With their submarine uniform? Submariner? Their mom, that wouldn't know. He wouldn't know. He wouldn't know, but I have seen pictures of people at that airline wearing their hat flying. <laughs> do they do the crush? Like the old no, fighter they crush? they turn it backwards. <laughs> They turned into a machine. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't understand. Wartime man. missions it's in peacetime. Peacetime missions in wartime. I've been <laughs> shot at, looked at, run over. I'll get you there safely. Come on. All right. Sorry, Douglas. I need no to problem. come up with a better captain. I don't want to be in the char- in the one in charge of trying to make this serious anymore, though. No, oh, it's dude. not worth it. No, right, this whole thing. Good. Don't get me started nice. about this whole thing. So this what? Is... What we've got is um, pilots who are getting VA benefits for for serious disabilities who are flying in commercial and civilian and probably aren't eligible based on their disabilities. Does that sound right? Or not? That's right? what the article sounds like. Yeah. This is so this happened before where a couple guys actually went to jail for it or got mm-hmm. probation where they had like PTSD, right? That's a disqualifier because sure. the FAA doesn't understand mental sure. health. So you claim Among PTSD coming out of service and then you don't disclose it. And that's the crime. 
That's a crime. And then the the medical records from your VA claim the fact that you're getting money and getting benefits then gets discovered by the FDA. Not well, does like, it, they're not supposed to cross those streams though, right? The In issue medical. is that. I'm not There's a whole form. Anything. The form asks you, FAA Med Express specifically asks you if you're now currently getting disabled disability benefits from the VA. And if you say no, and they it, find out you said you meant yes, you might go straight to jail. My question for you or, is, has it always been that way, though? Because I don't remember on my early med well, forms no, because that it question used to be No, because it used to be paper. Now that it's digital, uh, I can tell you like at drill weekend now yep, 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 in the military, yep, they always tell you, they always tell you, Hey, don't forget to disclose when you go out to your civilian doc, because now the system pulls mm -hmm. anytime your, your social is tied to it. Now, is that a HIPAA violation? I don't know, but Not when the, government the system's does all, the system's all talk. Sorry. And now that the system's all talk, people that Banner. were trying to Banner. avoid can you please let me talk? Sorry. <laughs> Not just the systems talk, but let me talk. People are getting in trouble because they didn't disclose on the form. Because if they had disclosed, sometimes it's a special issuance. Sometimes it's a, a couple extra questions. And sometimes you just don't get a medical until you figure it out. Do I agree with this? Depends on what it is. Yeah. I, you know, that's what I, was I, I mean, it. It just depends. It's like everything else. It depends. I think you should be honest. I will never encourage anybody to lie. But I also think that the FAA should do a better job so that people don't feel like they have to lie. And that, you know, if, if you're, if you can show it, the, the process needs to be streamlined so that people don't get grounded so easily, then sure. they would be more honest. Sure. And we could actually address mental health instead of trying to hide it, which is what we have now. People try to ha but hide. But it's it's more than PTSD, right? I mean, it's, no, it's, it's just not, an example. I mean, yeah, like that's, sleep apnea that's an extreme another, example. Like, sleep know. apnea is, is another one, right? Where you yeah. say, "Hey, I couldn't sleep. I had sleep apnea. You get a thirty percent disability. I'm getting paid, but I'm not telling the FAA because I don't have a continuing problem and I don't think it's a problem or whatever." So, yeah, stuff like that. But it still should be streamlined to where, look, I show you here. Here's the documentation. I'm still good to go. I'm not going to die in flight. Here's your medical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I have, I'm, I have 30% oh, disability. Boy. Here we go. What? Honky's going to jail. No, I no, mean, I, I mean, you claimed it, right? I mean, yeah, you told I, it, right? and yeah, it's not for anything that would affect you flying an airliner. No, no. And, Same you know, with the, me. I have way more than 30%. It has nothing to do that's going to affect me flying an airliner. But yeah. I do remember when I first came out of the military and that's, I'm glad you cleared that up over. Cause I'm like, I don't remember it being a thing. But it was when I first came out of the military, it was paper. And then it switched over. And then I do remember it. And then there was that big hubbub where they did jail these people and fire people. What do you mean, what do you mean paper? You mean there was like no when you like initially, your records were like your medical like records. When I started, oh. like you would walk in just like a doctor and be like, nope, 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 nope. And then it went but to are, a system. And that's when they started asking the VA. Your medical records used to also be paper too. I remember going from Vance to Randolph or wherever and you lug yeah. the big sealed file and it, it had like the thing, the tamper proof thing and like you couldn't it. touch it. You just had to hand it off. And then I tried to get it when I left Tyndall and they're like, we don't have that anymore because it's yeah. all been scanned in mm -hmm. and your medical records digital. And then when you go to apply for VA benefits, now it's even easier because they just yeah. go, well, if it's in your file, we've already got it. I don't yeah. have to provide, you know, all this stuff as much for sure. Yeah. But I mean, I, I made them same thing when I got off active duty. I made them print it. Yeah, I did they too. They printed, yeah, like a medical record, and they're like, really and sure? they, "We can put it on a disc." I'm like, "I got them both." Yeah, print it. Yeah, they can, I did do that. I, I mean, you know, I can see both sides. I can see some guys sure. trying to trying to get like all the money, and then I can see yep. some guys are like just an honest mistake, like yep. because like. It's uh, it's like you said, mover. It's two separate. It's almost yeah. like two separate authorities that talk. It needs to be like, well, if it's your flight medical, it's your flight medical. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But well, and that's the thing too is like even on the military side, you know, you'll go see somebody out in town, right? You step on a nail, you get a tetanus shot. Well, you know, when it's time to go get your medical or next drill weekend or whatever, you've forgotten about it, you know, because yeah. it says, hey, in the last 12 months, how many times have you gone to a provider and you're like, uh, I don't think I've been in the hospital. I'm fine. 
Yeah. But you forget about, you know, the little 10 minutes, you know, to get the tetanus shot or whatever. Sure. People yeah. do forget. And that's why it's only like, so it's 5,000, but of the 5,000, it was like 60 people that actually got emergency revocations of their certificates. And that's out of hundreds of thousands. Like we're talking teeny tiny percents sure. of people affected by this. This is not like cataclysmic. We're going to have a new pilot shortage. This is just. No. Eh, and even out of the 5,000, they said what, like 600 hold an ATP? 60. 60. Hold oh, an ATP. 60 no. had revocations. Had I don't know about the ATP. But I think only like, I thought I read yeah. somewhere it was like 600 or even air transport pilots so yeah, i don't know i mean if you're well, i mean sorry <clears throat> go ahead. Go ahead. i mean even outside of the va benefits I, I mean i've flown with enough guys who as pilots in general you don't like to even talk about medical stuff right because if you lose your medical you kind of lose your job which could be kind of a, a debbie upon, downer yeah. right upon. and yeah exactly man and if uh you know if you you know, hide, I don't think hiding things is anything new <laughs> on the on the pilot side, or maybe just not divulging all information might be a better. better that was a Jack term. episode. Was it? Remember the Jack episode where the guy that he goes on the stand and he's like, read from left to right. And he reads it oh. and it was I fly Navy because he they <laughs> yeah. changed the thing on him, but he had it memorized. Yes. yes. Oh, wow. Harmon Rap got him. Dang, got dude. him. Yeah, that's not so. That's what's going to happen. You're going to have Harmon Rab in court with you, right? Right. So I mean, who has it, night blindness himself? <laughs> yeah, I mean, is it wrong? Weird. Yes, yeah. but I mean, yeah. But dude, that right. story uh, in, in military aviation is as old as time, right? Of guys, you know, oh. doing things to get through and whatever it takes to get through a physical so they can go fly. And it, I'm yeah, not I mean, saying it's right. I'm not <laughs> saying it's wrong. But I'll tell you what, like. That shows a lot of dedication to want to go do something, right? I mean, you know, there were guys in World War II that couldn't read, didn't have the right vision. They're memorizing stuff, but they want to go fight for their country. Like, kind of hats off, man, honestly. Like, sorry, you know. Now, civilian world, flying passengers, different animal, right? I mean, and, and if we're trying to maliciously, you know, um, uh, falsify things so you get more money, different animal. But like, so I, I think don't that's lie. part of the problem. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't lie. lie. Yeah, M movers. Are, I mean, lie. at the end of the day, it's like, just don't lie. I mean, yeah, don't lie. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Don't lie. If you make a mistake, own up to it. Don't lie. Yeah. Um, Douglas, to the chat, sir. Yes, sir. Connor Custer was waiting Thanks, for Connor. one to be here again. Curious where wingtip awareness sits on the list when landing an E two on a carrier. Oh, uh, it's all right. All right. Sorry. The real men who flew airplanes around the ship are talking for a minute. She's a, she's a wide Here. girl. She's a, she's a big girl. Uh, so it's an 80 foot wing spot, wingspan and an 85 foot landing area. And I mean, Gonky could attribute like they, they park those planes right up on the foul line. Um, so center line's huge. Uh, you think about it all the time. The, the ship thinks about it. The air boss thinks about it. You know, that's why we usually come down last because of deck space. They, they want to, you know, it's hard to taxi around, um, even with the wings folded. So it's, it's a big plane. So that's so. like, as a Hornet guy, <laughs> when I feel like landing up my airplane and I'm right on the foul line, like close to oh, the like, wires. You hear the bees, you're like, mm -mm. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> oh my God, here comes the E2. It's like canopies coming down immediately. And like, like Wombat said, it's, yeah, it is, <laughs> it's five feet. And you got, you're parked right up against the foul line. And I mean, you see him out there making his little corrections and you're like, he's got it center line. Well, dude, like, and, uh, and I mean, you, you yeah. add to that, like, I mean, oh, yeah. the same things you had to deal with. The center line's constantly moving to your right, <laughs> yeah. except now we got massive amounts of P factor, you know. Yeah. four tails three rudders i mean it's a mess i mean i one of my best friends i mean Gonky it's important where he bolted and his the wing tip of his right wing tip went through the tail of two super hornets on the bow of the nimitz and he went back airborne i mean so it's that's did it take the wing tip off did it, it take did. The wing two foot of it gone wow two foot the grum and tech reps came out uh two days later because they brought him back aboard the ship because that makes sense because we were 60 <laughs> miles off the coast of san diego Sure. Which is it's where the depot hook. maintenance is, which would have been an excellent <laughs> place to go land. But I digress. Um, they bring him back aboard the ship and um, 
the tech reps come out and they were like, man, if, if it was, it was something like less than two more inches, it would have severed all the hydraulic lines the plane would have crashed. It was crazy. Wow. So they had to crane it off actually. So, and then, so, they it's, it. so I guess your awareness is quite high. It's quite high. Okay. Yeah. Not anymore. I could care Good less question. about center line now, but <laughs> uh, back then quite a bit, the Hornet <laughs> took all that out of me. I don't, whatever you could land on left you know, lane, six, right eight, lane, left or right. It's fine. This is all very interesting. Next. <laughs> BQ Sam would like to know what are some health complications that come from being a fighter jet? Oh, <laughs> when can you Look retire without any issues? The day before you start. Uh, 24 <laughs> years old after your first flight, assuming you don't pull nine G's. Correct. Uh, Correct. The Wait, spinal did issues. Did you permanently right. damage your bladder your first F-16 flight? No. <laughs> <laughs> right? I thought I gave myself sense. cancer. <laughs> yeah, right. I thought I gave myself cancer. That's after uh, the first flight. Um, yeah, I had my first neck injury when I was 26. Um, and tore a bunch of tendons in my neck right here that still to this day give me problems now. The what the the jet that broke me the hardest was the T thirty eight that gave me uh, disc issues even worse because that stupid parachute also gave the me vipers bad though right because the guys that I fly with that flew vipers it's horrible for your back isn't it yeah Cause it's because well, you're because the seats recline so you don't you don't lean against it you're kind of you're up, up like dog and, I never yeah. thought of that but I'm like yeah dude if you're uh, uh, except you know, when defense. you when you do defensive you put your head against the headrest it actually tells you to do that like the, oh, really? the book if you read the man manual it tells you to set your head and do it but the problem is it's not defensive hey, defensive was my favorite because low g relatively speaking <laughs> yeah, well it's relatively low g and you That's set true. your head you you know whatever yeah. it was offense or high aspect that would mess with you hey luna uh, she yeah. showed up because you're uh, trying to look and pull hard and well, because and you're that. transitioning, right? Yeah. So you're like, and you forget because that's how I tore my neck. I was fighting the wing commander, which biggest story of his life, because he's like, I broke the Lieutenant, but dude, I'm telling you, we cut across the circle and oh, I picked my head up off the seat. Like I was up trying to look across to see him and dude, it was more pain than any, I didn't think I could land the jet. Like I could not like this whole side of my neck just was locked and I could not turn. And it was so much pain. They pulled me out of the airplane. Like I finally got in, I taxied in. I'm like, Oh my God. Oh my God. I brought to, I went to the, 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 uh, the clinic. They gave me muscle relaxers, dude. I slept for two days straight Wow. and I was just like done. Wow. And like I never, you never imagine that much pain just from your neck. And then, dude, once your neck's immobilized, like they'll tell you this in self defense, right? You immobilize the head, you're pretty much done. You're done. Yeah. Well, now you're flying a fighter trying to do that. Yeah. And then, jeez, that lower back, neck, um, you know, sinus issues, probably jaw issues from the mask. Um, you know, a lot of guys have, have shown up with cancer. Hearing. Cancer's a big thing with with fighters. Hearing, um, knees from running. Because the stupid PT test that tests nothing that we ever do. Um, Neck and back are by the You guys have to run from the golf course to the plane. So, I mean, that's like us <laughs> running. A, it was not a carrier. A, like, where are you going to go? It's a slow trot. Slow trot. <laughs> because of the, the harness. Like, you can't run yeah. in that anyway because it's got, you know, your... Well, you have a harness. Boy. We unclip it so you can walk like a normal man. Oh, really? Yeah, I used to yeah, go to sleep when I, when, I, when like I got to the Navy. I was like, where are the clippy clips to unclip this harness? I don't want to waddle to the jet. You can't look cool waddling to a jet. Yeah, you do. How waddle. do you look cool? You do. You do. How did, did Tom you, Cruise look so but, cool saying, I feel the need, the need you know for why? speed? Because he wasn't they didn't have the real equipment. Up. It wasn't correctly <laughs> fitted. That's why. Yeah, there you go. That's just a movie. Every single Navy fighter pilot, the only time his G suit is properly fitted is like the first day or I'm when he goes to the centrifuge. Yeah. Correct. On yeah. G suit. Well, I'm talking day. to the That's harness. It. The harness is supposed same to make you waddle because you have to sit. <laughs> yeah, no, same with the harness. You have to sit if you eject. Yeah. Yeah. In the Air Force, we just unclip it. Yeah. No, Navy, we're way cooler. We'll just hurt ourselves. You can go to Home Depot and get a couple like D clips for like six bucks. I don't know if those are rating. We We don't have, we build ships, not golf courses. We don't have the money for that. Boats, (laughs) boats, boats. Boats. We also have ships too. We just. 
Cluterus. Dang, thanks, one man. One last shot. Thanks, Cluterus. All right, last one for tonight. You guys remake Smokey and the Bandit. Oh, Whose car do you use for the movie? Wombat's Mustang, Moore's Corvette, or Gonkey's IROC? That's oh, Gonkey's yes. IROC. Yes. We go no. back to Vance, <laughs> and we get... So... We get the dragon. So, actually, <laughs> Wombat actually was a Trans Am. Like, he had a Smokey in the band. He was a what now? Did we just... Trans he was a what? Trans Am guy. Oh. He's a Trans Am guy. <laughs> Words matter. I misheard. I yeah, thought I'm, I'm talking. I thought there were conversions happening. I'm talking the no kidding. Not that there's anything the wrong with that. Six point six liter T tops, yeah. and uh, we used to roll around <laughs> in Oklahoma in that thing in our in our white t shirts with like cheap trick blast. <laughs> yes. Do you remember? It was the greatest. Yeah, we got when smoked. we. Do we you remember smoked. when we got? <laughs> room inspected or i got room inspected by the base commander and the female i guess it's she's a captain or lieutenant or whatever your o3 is um first lieutenant captain and uh um, yeah and uh we were gonna meet up to walk over the hangar and we got room i got room inspected and i had all the parts from the trans am all over my dormitory because it's the air force <laughs> And dude, the like this female was writing every one of these things up. You remember this because I'm sure you did yeah. room inspections mover and like everything's <laughs> getting written up. She's like, Oh, I got this Navy guy. And like finally this base commander's like, Is that your trans am in the parking lot? <laughs> yes, sir. He's like, awesome. let's go take a look at it. And I didn't get rid of for anything. And I was like, oh, she was so pissed. There was like yeah. three pa- dude. I had like alternator, air conditioner, like, it was torn yeah. apart. They did the whole interior. That thing was that whole thing interior. was awesome. They didn't. Really it couldn't get out of its own way. It could. Oh no! Yeah. Remember how awesome it sounded in Corpus when we cut the exhaust off it at the yeah. base shop to go get mufflers put on. Yeah, but out of the part. three here, the three choices that he's given us, for sure, Yours. the IROC. Is yeah, it has to be the IROC. For sure, yeah, it's gotta be the yeah. Everything else has way too much performance for a Smokey and the Bandit movie. <laughs> IROC's the only one that can you can't the jump the vet anyway. It'd be totaled as soon as it landed. <laughs> it's the end Dude, of it. the Fiber IROC just splinters. <laughs> the IROC just has the the uh, the screen presence. The Shelby's just gonna be hitting people the whole time. So that's we need a Sally Fields though. Oof. Don't we all? Well, you're getting Sally Struthers. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. real time today <laughs> not <laughs> on that note yeah. hey anthony, anthony yeah. cornelius i have two friends who had to fight the faa to get their ppl because they were diagnosed with adhd as kids yeah. and they actually get it uh, i got a buddy who from, same thing and he's not able to get a uh geez. medical email me gonky i've got a flight doc friend that might be able to help mayo oh, clinic really? is also a, a very good yeah she's she's usually pretty good about being able to help people okay or anybody, if anybody wants to email me, if they got a question, I got a flight doc friend that takes up calls. She used to work at the Mayo Clinic, and they they've got ways to make the argument. Thanks, Cheddar. No question, Thanks, Cheddar. but thank you. I never get a bell notification for lives even being set to all. Astounding how much quality content, especially considering everything. You're awesome. Well, everything. <laughs> It's content. I wonder which channel that was for. Oh, he's mm-hmm. totally talking to me, dude. He said you're awesome. Considering yeah. everything. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it's yeah, kind of a okay. giveaway. Right. Dead giveaway. Thanks, Cheddar. <laughs> Next. <laughs> the FAA doesn't like a lot of medications prescribed for mental health, especially those that help you sleep. <clears throat> I think Trigger, for both of yeah. those, actually, Trigger did two of them. But yeah. Um, yeah that was a, it makes sense, kind of. I, mean, I think we're behind the times a lot when it comes to mental oh, yeah. health, just in general. Yeah, I think the FAA is kind of picking and choosing uh, what they consider as safe medication and not. That's my own personal opinion, which means nothing. Yeah. But that's just my own opinion based on our world today. Yeah. All right. Next. What do you think is the cause of the high rate of cancer in fighter pilots? It's the Radiation. reverse cowgirl riding of the radar that you're on. <laughs> <laughs> or is it real? I've Whatever. never thought of it that way, dude, but that is pretty funny. <laughs> the giant mover. I don't know why you're. It's the truth. Mover I'm doesn't understand. Do the what is like cruise sock and reverse? <laughs> What's going on here? You're going to learn some talking? things tonight. Damn it. Yeah, it's just the radar. I mean, we had a, it was funny. Not funny. It's sad. We had a high rate in the E2 community, too. But the, the ongoing joke in the E2 community is. You know, you'd go to squadron functions and every high up in the squadron, their families come. It was all girls. And you're like, hmm, wonder what's going on with uh, what's how's that, that all? Was it was it you that told me in the E2, like when the radar? You was, heard it. 
Yeah, you hear, hear it. it. You hear it in the ICS every time the dome beam would come around. It would. <laughs> that sounds like space, dude. That's awesome. It's you're like a, space, but way you're less cool than space. You're getting radiated. Dude. You're dying a little bit. Every like time. literally, when we say up there Slow. on a six on a triple cycle, like I'm dying a little bit every minute here. That's what we're Slow dying cover. inside. Yeah, dude, Killing I think me softly with your dome. Also, I mean, right? It's a glass canopy. I mean, there's not a lot of UV above you a lot, right? So, I mean, yeah. a lot of sun exposure, UV exposure, a lot of radar Gamma. exposure. Yeah. Jammers. Liver yeah. problems. Yeah, but they don't oh, fly no, high, right? What, the E2? You're not like up in the 40s or anything, are you? No, but I have a radar that can melt wow, people wow, above wow, me. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I mean, literally, that was one of the things I'm pretty sure, yeah. like, I think it's still in there where there was like, you don't turn anything on the ground because if the squats it just fail, like, it hurts a little poof. <laughs> melt your face off. <laughs> Such an awesome airplane. <laughs> we learn we lose more plane captains that way. Yeah. Cheddar, cheddar, yeah. thanks. Sorry for the probably dumb question, but how do you not completely block each other's comms in combat? How isn't it bzz, 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 all the time? You can you shut the f up. You That's can. why I'm Every mover ruins movies. That's all I ever key in on because it's like that's the number one thing is calm discipline. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. Stop talking. You know, I always used to poo poo con like the calm discipline would be at such a level that it would it was just ridiculous right True. and then i experienced Shut. i experienced some calm that was uh definitely not as disciplined and i was like oh it kills your situational awareness yeah, it'll it's kill horrible. you Ooh, we're gonna get to that in a minute <laughs> yeah. it can kill you too like literally thank so you. yeah yeah thank you it's a script should I put a microwave oven in my flight sim for maximum emergency? <laughs> Sit on Austin. one. With the door open. <laughs> Sit on one. Straddle Sit and it. spin. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you'll oh, have gosh. girls. You want a real DCS experience? Hope your kids are in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, There's Peter. A, hey. Peter. Hey. Scooter's forever, mm -hmm. man. Whoa. And, Did you have a question? Uh, I forget. No, I didn't. He was just saying no, that. No, it was just nice. Be nice. Auburn Alum says, I'm friends with a few Prowler folks, and they all have medical conditions that are unexplained by the docs. Where's the Prowler? Yeah. That thing's got some trons. Yeah. It's got some trons. We're it's got some trons. pointed forward. Alleg <laughs> allegedly. 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 <laughs> right. Right. Spread out. Forward of the back yeah. here. So yes. Towards the with. cockpit. That's yeah, why a, a lot of us in the T-38 did not even turn the jam. Remember that gawky? Yeah, no, I'm not turning that thing on. <laughs> even, in, even in the Hornet, it's like, uh, are you guys yeah, sure? Because it's sitting like way back there, and you're like, I'm sure it's... Well, you were no, sitting no, on it in the T-38. Yeah, like, no, I never... I'm not turning yeah. this thing on. <laughs> did you ever have anybody in your air wing join up on the Hawkeye and then have the Hawkeye crew mess with them, tell them they had to go like to the dock and get all this extra? That was our, that was our no. joke. That's yeah, awesome. if they if they joined up like on like the NFOs would be like, oh dude, they had this whole like form. Script. Oh, <laughs> you gotta go to the dock, like dude, the radiation you just got is like a lifetime. Uh, I'd fall for it. All right. Oh yeah, I know. that's right. why I asked if you ever. I assumed <laughs> no. you're like I never joined up on the Hawkeye. Screw those guys. Moving on, <laughs> uh, Wombat gave me the great segue. Today's mental health minute applies in life. Flies and everything. Loss of situational awareness. How do you know when you've lost situational awareness? What is situational awareness? And how do you get it back? Gonky, I'm going to let you have the floor first. I always oh, talk geez. first. So. <clears throat> All right. Well, what are the three questions? How do you know you've lost SA? Well, a lot of times man, you don't. You don't. So, <laughs> right. That's, that's, that's the... How do you uh, recognize it? Yeah. A lot of times you recognize it by an outside input. Because loss of SA is basically your perception of reality isn't reality, right? So whatever is causing that, if we're talking about airplanes, if we're you know trying to process radar data and, and whatnot, uh, your perception of what's going on might not be real. And then maybe a, uh, your wingman or whatever comes in with uh, some new information via radio call that you're like, oh, wait a minute, right? And it kind of puts the train back on the tracks. So, I mean... It can be super dangerous, man, because if uh, you're not living in the real world, I mean, whether you're flying an airplane or, or not, uh, 
you know, it can, it can hurt you for sure. Well, I'm I know you've got a great story. It's tough to tell. I'll, I'll be honest, man, this whole time I've been thinking about it and, uh, I don't know if you guys know it, but I know, um, I don't talk about it much cause it was a big deal. Um, like my folks don't even know. So if they're watching, they might want to <laughs> turn this one off. Uh, but we were in Fallon, um, as air wing and, you know, gonky knows, I mean, you guys have both been to Fallon, but, um, air wing, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of at the tip of your spear, I guess, before deployment, you know, like you're feeling really good. And we all felt that way. And we were doing our, our tactics. I'll never forget. It, it was one of the last flights I was going to do on that debt. And, um, we've been practicing these things all month, you know, really all workups. And, uh, and, you know, I flew a lot, God, it's hard to tell. I flew, um, lot 12s, you know, and, and they weren't the best, obviously, um, mids, not the best, you know, but, but we had gotten really good working together and I was flying with my, my skipper and we're doing our tactics. And essentially we'd come in and we'd dive to the deck and then pass a certain point, climb back up turn around, you know, we were basically supporting each other that way. And, and we got botched and, um, and, you know, I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm going out and it's like one of the last outs I'm going to do and getting long gas. And, you know, your mind goes to, okay, I got RTB soon, all this stuff. And, you know, I hope I got all my notes for the debrief and all that. And I look at mids cause I'm assuming the other plane is gone, coming back in high. And, uh, I see the mids track right in front of me and I'm like, stupid mids. And then all of a sudden I look out and I have a face full of Hornet. Um, and because the only way I can describe this, the only reason I did this is because on the out, I was supposed to go down. So the only thing I did was unload and he went right over the top of me. Um, and you talk about, you know, some external force, um, snapping you out of it. It was, it was Betty screaming, pull up. And, um, you know, it took full, full half stick grunt. Um, you know, they pulled the tapes after and it rat out was less than a hundred feet at the bottom out. Um, I mean, you know, it, there's, I mean, they, they, they talked about it, you know, within the air wing, within a squadron. And, and I mean, it was, uh, you know, it was like a second left if I hadn't pulled up when I did. Um, and you know, it was, Dude, it was tough. It's still tough. I mean, you can probably tell I don't like talking about it. And, but I learned a lot about situational awareness because I, looking back on it, I could see identifiers that I was losing my situational awareness, like about 15 minutes leading up to that. My mind was other places. And since that moment, you know, whether it's um, when I was still flying fighters or T 45s or, even now in the airlines, like I could recognize those same things about me and, and I could, I could snap out of it very quickly now. Um, and, uh, there were subsequent, uh, emergencies I've had and things like that, that I think I actually survived because I was able to recognize, you know, Hey, I'm losing my essay, focus on what you can focus on. And, and like mover said, it doesn't, it's not just aviation. I mean, you know, how many people have, um, been driving, a car that has the collision assistance or something like that. And that catches them off guard, right? They didn't see a car and all of a sudden it's, you know, it's breaking for you or it's doing something or it's alerting you and you're like, you've lost situational awareness. Right. So, I mean, it could be every day in your life and, and it's, thank God I learned the lesson and I wasn't, you know, somebody's memorial page or, you know, something like that. Um, but there's, I mean, I, I absolutely should have been, and it's a hundred percent. I lost situational awareness to what I was doing and, and, um, and that was it. I mean, so it's huge. I mean, I think it's probably one of the scariest things in aviation to lose. Um, but I think it's really tough if you don't recognize it, you know, kind of like when we talk about, you know, we were always trained, at least I was, you guys were with hypoxia, you know, know your symptoms. What do you see in yourself when you start to lose these things? And I don't ever really remember that with situational awareness. Like what are your tendencies? And I've talked to people and I've talked to doctors about it since. And they say that we have tendencies um, with situational awareness where when you start to lose it, it's the same for you, regardless of the situation, whether it's in aviation, whether you're driving your car or you're, 
you know, doing whatever you, you lose the same kind of insights in the same order, the way your brain works, which is pretty interesting. So luckily I've learned from it. Um, thank God I obviously made it out. Um, you know, it's the, the question that I got asked a lot after is why didn't I pull the, the paddle? <laughs> and I guess my situation there or in my brain, I didn't want to get in trouble for a jet. I mean, that's, I know it sounds stupid, but, but yeah, it was close. It really was. So. Wow. Yeah. The first thing you usually lose is your hearing. That's, yeah. that's like across the board. We, we brief that we talk about that because you'll start missing radio calls. You'll start missing what people are saying. And it's the same thing. I mean, when you say radio calls, you know, I can talk to like sheriff's office stuff, you know, when you're out on patrol, cause you're listening to the radio, you're trying to build a picture where everybody is and everything much like you do in, in flying fighters. And first thing it goes, Hey, you missed a call. You missed a key up, you missed something. Uh, you know, I'm sure any any profession where communication is key, that's usually the first thing. And so, you know, going back to the whole situational awareness, right? It's the understanding of your surroundings and, and your environment. What's going on? You know, you're, you're, pro you're processing all this information and building a picture in your mind of what's happening. And when it starts to break down, we lose that sense and we kind of get stuck in our own world. A great example, I would say, Gonky, you and I, probably the T-38, right? Because you, when we first started, when I first started and you first started, you know, we didn't have iPads with TCAS and, you know, the, the ADSB tracks and all that stuff. You didn't know where anybody was unless you were listening. And yeah. they always used to tell you, you know, the first thing when you start to lose situational awareness, you know, because all you have is your hearing. Yep. First thing you need to do is get back in your block. And what a block is, is an altitude assignment that you're, you're given and you're, you know that if I'm in this place, I should be safe. Now, granted, what happens when two people lose SA? Sometimes they run into each other. And the T-38 was the first place where we're teaching ACM tactics, air combat maneuvering. It was the first place that I had learned, you know, if engage supporting fighter. But if you're in a fight, 2v1, and you lose SA and the other guy is doing a thing, you just get out. You remove yourself from the fight because three people where one has no SA, one's trying to fight the other and they can't keep track of each other. It's safer to just extricate yourself from this situation. And sometimes even in life, that that's the goal. Go to your safe place, not safe space, but your safe place. What it, Go back to what you know and then work your way back out. Build that picture yeah. uh, once again by, you know, just like the task saturation, you have to build it block by block to get yourself. And sometimes it's, Hey, a cool question. You know, you, if you're calm permitting, sometimes it's just, look, I'm just going to remove myself from this fight. No harm, no foul, because I am not helpful when I am what we call tumbleweed. You know, when I don't know what's going on, I've completely lost situational awareness. I got to get out. I got to get out of the situation and then either build range and regroup or get out altogether so that you can do it. I mean, we do the same thing. We call them cold ops, right? What happens, you know, you're, you're going down range, you know, you're, you're facing a threat, you lose the picture, you don't know what's happening in front of you. So you go cold and that works in life too, where you're facing some situation, you're facing some threat and it's starting to get overwhelming and you're starting to lose what's happening in front of you. So you go, okay, let's, let's build some separation from this. Let's give me some time. I need some time away from this so that I can open that aperture back up, start listening again and then figure out what's going on. I mean, one of the times I lost situational awareness just when I was in the field training program, we came up on a, a car with a guy inside. And I'm just like, he's like, hey, shine your spotlight on him. So I'm like, okay, cool. Next thing I know, I look over and my FTO's got his gun drawn. And I'm like, what? Holy shit, what are we, what are we doing? You know, and I'm like, okay, I guess so. And because yeah. it was a guy that was not cooperating, he was, uh, very inebriated in his car at two o'clock in the morning, you know, wouldn't show his hands and we didn't know if he was reaching for something or whatever. And I, I tell that story. I mean, nothing ended up happening. We actually ended up giving the guy a ride home because, you know, we just wanted to help the dude. But in that initial moment of what the hell is going on, my situational awareness went to zero. Like I thought I had this understanding of what this picture was. And then I look at over and this was a guy that had been shot before. So this is a dude that's on his heightened awareness because he he kind of knows the situation. So for me, that realization like, hey, OK, I need to have a higher sense of realization myself. But also 
when I'm in a situation, I can also use context clues to get myself back in the, in the fight. You know, I can see what other people are doing. I can use those clues to kind of, okay, this is a dangerous situation. I need to use cover. I need to do this. And it's just wh wherever you're at, sometimes you have to bring a friend in. You have to do that phone a friend, whether you even talk to him or just observing to get that picture back of what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I can't agree more. You, you mentioned the loss of what you can hear. Um, when we did the debrief in my situation, there was two and a half minutes of tape where I didn't respond. It was about, it was in a, in about a minute and a half of that was prior to the merge and the, and the pull up, pull up. So I had, my essay was shot long before I even turned cold and, and went out. So, uh, I can't, yeah, I, I can't agree more, man. And, and I can imagine in your situation, that's pretty damn scary, uh, <laughs> to, to well, real, not realize you're in that situation, but yeah. But, well, and you know, Hey, the other thing is, you know, if you're the, if you're the one with the essay in life, yeah. flying or whatever, you know, make it, help make your it responsibility to help your buddy out. You know I mean? And one bad in your case, your electronic buddy helped you out. Yeah. Right. I mean, buddy, but we do, we, that's a great point. We do that as wingmen, as flight leaders. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Right? When like Gonk, you remember that time I had the AMAD pressure and yep. you know, you and I are flying, dude, we're backing each other up. Yep. You know, I mean, yeah. you're keeping me from losing situation awareness because you're like, Hey, we're this far from the field. Where yeah. are we at in the checklist? How are we going to re yeah. recover? You're task yeah. saturated, right? So, I mean, it's yeah. easier. You're more susceptible to becoming, uh, to losing SA just because you're not, you're out of your element and you're task saturated. Yeah, that's one of the things yeah. I love in my current job of teaching where, you know, you get people that aren't as familiar with our background and they'll make the the general stereotype like, oh, <clears throat> single seat fighter pilots, they don't know CRM and they don't know how to work together. And I'm like, I disagree. I, I think it was in a lot of respects a lot easier in the Hawkeye when I could physically reach over to talk to my co-pilot to have that CRM, <clears throat> sorry, compared to when you're in a different jet. And, um, and it was, it was my skipper who, you know, after I obviously recovered, but he was, he got back on me and got my head back in the game. And so I think it's very difficult when you're single seat, um, cause the communication barriers there, you're not right next to the person. And, and yeah, it's huge. And I agree a hundred percent in life. Um, you know, I've said this before on this channel and, and I, I believe it. I mean, we're in times right now where people are struggling big time and you don't know, um, you don't know. You don't know the person you're dealing with and what they're going through. You know, whether that's the person ahead of you in the grocery line or ahead of you at the gas station or, or a best friend of yours. And the best thing that you can do, in my opinion, is, is, is to try to be empathetic to it. And if they're missing the forest through the trees, because whatever they're in is so bad that there's no way they can get out of it, you know, be that light that shows them, Hey man, like at, win every battle, right? I mean, every step, you know, sometimes we've all been in situations where, you know, it's not even getting through the day. It's getting through the hour. It's getting through the minute. It's getting through the damn second. But that's a win, right? And you, as the person with situational awareness to the to the situation, can bring that to them and go, "Hey, just let's get through this step together, and then the next step together." And like Mover saying, it broadens them back out, and they can take a look at the whole picture and go, "You know what? You're right. I have a chance." And that's really all you're trying to do is is give your buddies a chance. Well, you're concise, correct, right. Tom. Yeah, and Wombat, you bring up a good point, dude. I mean, outside of the, outside of the cockpit, I think a lot of times, and the you know, outside of flying, as far as losing SA and like like you say, with people struggling mentally, it's a it's a hard time to believe anything you hear, right? So just like in the airplane, if you get bad information, you are going to lose SA, right? And it's kind of like in the real world, like like you have to you have to feed your brain good information for you to be able to properly handle whatever's actually in front of you or mentally going on or whatever. And it's, it, we're in a, we're in a time when that's, I would argue is pretty challenging, um, especially with social media and the regular media. And, you know, people are, are really scratching their heads. They don't know what to believe, what to trust. And that, really forms your perception of reality and it can affect your mood and your mental state. You know, I mean, that's a, you bring up a great point, man. So, I mean, it's trying times. That's for sure. You got to own your mind. I, I always say that you got to own your mind that yeah. 
That's Make six sure, inches yeah. between your ears. If you can't own that space, yeah, that doesn't matter control. what you're going through. You got to control what what you feed your brain. Yeah, bad sure. essay is worse than no essay. Yeah, that's true. That's true. One hundred percent, man. One hundred percent. That's true. I mean, look at all the mishaps we have where the, they just had bad information. Like people 100%. were working off of terrible 100%. assumptions. Yeah. Or, and, I mean, even your basic private pilot, right? I mean, he, he gets, you know, he, uh, his attitude gyro tumbles and the, and the visibility is not bad. And he just, right. It's bad yep. info. It, it'll kill you. Well, let's go back to the MiG 23. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Two different levels of situational awareness. We don't know who's right. We don't know who's wrong, but. That's right. They were different. That's for sure. They were very different, you know, and they didn't communicate because it becomes communication. You know, um, if, if you can't talk to your wingman guy in the cockpit or whatever, Wombat, to your point about talking about it's easier in an airliner. The other piece to that, too, is if I'm trying to give my crew member situational awareness, uh, autopilot aside, that's somebody else who can fly the jet. Yeah, correct. If you're single seat, all he could do is talk. I remember, yeah. you know, the 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 lightning strike, uh, VFA 204. Dude, I all I could do was watch and talk. You know, when he was incapacitated and I'm just talking him around the pattern and flying as close as I could to try to say, hey, you know, let's put the thing on the thing and, and do this. Yeah. I, I couldn't take the airplane from him. Like when no. he said, when he came up aux and said, and we were in a, a right hand turn at 450 feet, turning towards the runway, and he said, This is hard, and he slurred it. I'm like, dude, I'm about to watch something very, mm. very bad here. And there's nothing you can do but keep, but say, Okay, I'm gonna have to be the calm one and keep talking. And you know, just try to build this picture. Okay, we're airspeed, altitude, aim point, all that stuff. And that's what we have to do as our our friend. You know, if we if we see our friend spiraling down. And they, they have bad information. We have to give them good information. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Oh. I agree. Douglas, you got anything from the practitioner slash expert perspective? I, I was listening to this one to learn. I didn't have much to much to add. <laughs> I've, I've been in way too many situations where I've lost SA and the, the thing that brought me back almost killed me. So I, I wanted to know how to, how to fix that. Well, you see it. I'm sure you see it teaching race car students. Oh, Man, yeah. And what I've seen I mean, is that helicopter pilots have got SA for days. <laughs> <laughs> that's because they can fake just news. hover. That's, that's fake news. <laughs> you can stop. Yeah, that's not okay. I don't know, it was an Apache true. pilot that I'm, that I'm thinking. <laughs> well, of. that's a different. Yeah, yeah that's a real. Nick Cage. That's a real. Nick Cage, man, about. he had that Corvette and everything, of course. No, the, 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 um, the, the guy he was is the greatest. The, the guy was telling me where the other cars were. He said, Did you see that flag at turn three? I was like, yeah. <laughs> but race cars is a great example of losing yeah, situational absolutely. awareness because remember Daytona, we had 120 yeah, we something saw cars it with full trickle, right? No, is that not where you're going? Daytona? Well, and there's, it, I think it's a good analogy because there's a lot of factors that come into play, like fatigue and, oh, yeah. and you know weather conditions and traffic. And if you're just out there driving around for a while and suddenly you come up on some traffic or it gets dark, things change. So yeah, yeah. maybe I can relate. Yeah. But oh yeah, I'm sure. A lot of good advice. All right. But if somebody yeah, says pull else? up, pull yeah. up, period. Even, even or if out. you're in a race car. <laughs> up or out. Either way. Good advice. <laughs> sorry. I'm All right. Sorry. Moving on. <laughs> He's not wrong. I mean, He's not wrong. No. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. We got, either one uh, can save your life. It's basically. <laughs> Thanks, save sir. your life <laughs> and your bank account. Trigger 118 <laughs> says, love the channel, guys. You guys have got me through some hard times, so to speak. Oh, sorry. That's a serious thing. Hard times I'm going through. Keep up the amazing work. Sorry you're going through that stuff, Trigger. Yeah, man. Um, well, we need to have some pitch. fun, man. This was deep. It's Hold big. on. One that, more that pitch for the, me. for the mental health because I always say this. Oof. Look, if you're struggling by yourself, if you're struggling in general, get help. Talk to somebody. Don't, don't try to fight this battle alone. Um, there are options for you. Even if it's calling 911, don't ever make a temporary problem permanent. You know, don't lose SA to the point that you're just going to end it all because you felt like you couldn't get it back because there's always light. There's always another life that waits for you that you can reinvent yourself, make it better, do something cool. Just, just don't, don't do that. Cause there are people that care about you 
um, no matter what, somebody's going to have to pay that price if you'd make that decision and it's not worth it. It's just not. So that, there you go. All right. Sorry. I had to do that because that's important to talk about it is. every time. Uh, Douglas, what else we got? We have make them tell you no. I don't have any make them tell you no. We have any more chats because okay. I think that's the end of the show I after that. Caught up. All right. Let's really? see. Wait, we've got. We got one. That Jason. One. Jason. Speak, Thanks, speaking man. of loss of SA, have you guys had to have gone in a flow state where your brain just goes autopilot on where you just did something very complex? That's the whole point of training. Yep. I'll tell you mine. Uh, Doug, you'll probably like this one. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, so when I was in pilot training, I, the, the, the HUD video is actually on the channel somewhere. I was on my second or third solo, the formation solo, where it's you and then the instructor and a student. So your solo formation. And it was my, my next door neighbor advance and my flight commander in one jet. They were leading and I was the wing on the formation takeoff. And at rotation, worst part in a T-38, hot, hot day. Uh, bird goes right down the right between us, gets in the intake and compressor stalls. And you talk about t flow state slash temporal distortion. I did the bull face and had no idea I did it because everything after that was automatic. It wasn't until I got on the ground. I'm like, did I try to abort? Like I honestly had. Like, I was worried. I thought, I'm like, well, I'm going to hook this ride because I thought that I had ripped the throttles to idle and tried to stop and then kept going. But if you watch the tape, it would have been impossible to take off had I done that because by the time I got airborne, the gear's up, you know, I'm out of runway. And it was just because, because of that. But that temporal distortion of time standing still, your brain goes into, oh, I'm just, I got this. You know, I've trained this so many times. You know, throttles to max, flap 60, Attain CETO's minimum. And I did it. I mean, I even watched the nose push over and it was all automatic. It was all just my brain based on the training. It just did it. And that was, that always stuck with me because I'd heard of guys, you know, they jacked or they had gone through things and it just, everything was automatic or time slowed down or whatever. So I think there's a little bit of both temporal distortion and flow state in that you're just, you, you don't remember doing it. You're just like, well, it must have happened. Wombat. Like I've you. had, I mean, you and I have talked about some of my incidents, both in the E2, the Hornet, T45, you know, I've talked about them on your channel and just as friends, we've all talked, but I'll tell you like my brain, when I have SA, and I, I don't know if this is just dumb luck, it probably is. It's not skill, but like I, it goes into a place I can't even describe. I think of the most bizarre things because I have such a hyper focus. I mean, I still to this day remember when I couldn't turn the Hawkeye left on landing because of a hydraulic issue, the center line call, the backup LSO made. And he was a, he was a friend of mine. And I, I remember thinking to myself, great call, bro. Like, I mean, to think of that in the moment, but it's etched in there. Like it'll always be us in there. And it was a great call, but like, so that's what I think this is, is you, but I, I agree with mover. And it's one of the things, you know, as an airline pilot, but also as an instructor and some would argue more an instructor than an airline pilot, frankly, but the um, that's what worries me about aviation training in general. It doesn't matter if it's civilian, military, or whatever. It's like you, every minute that you cut out of any aviation training pipeline, you're taking away some of what Mover just described. That that whether it's flow state, muscle memory, you know, there's a lot of, you know, you're on brainstem power. I've heard that before, which I had a girlfriend once explain to me how it's actually not brainstem power because that's not the part of your brain we didn't work out by the way i don't know if that <laughs> shocks you um that relationship didn't last very long but um it it's all of that is why you need that time you know so when you get people starting to look at it from a money standpoint and go ah we could take this out we could take this out you can until you can't and that's what worries me so i shared this on the twitter uh dave grossman fine american on training, you don't rise to the occasion in combat. You sink to the level of your training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I've heard I mean, various, you, there's various iterations, you know, you don't, you don't rise to the occasion. You fall back on your training, all that stuff. And it's true. There's, there's been many and one that will hundred percent agree. This part of your job as an LSO is to make sure, you know, I think I'm high, you know, you think I'm low. 
I listen to you kind of thing, right? There's been a lot of night traps I've done where clearly my perception of where I'm at and where this airplane's going is not real based on the calls I'm getting. And, you know, somehow I, I trap, right? So, I mean, it's a kind of, it's a complex procedure. There's a lot of stuff going on. People line up in attack nighttime, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. And it is kind of amazing now that I think about it. I never really thought about it until you guys mentioned those stories, but uh, yeah, I guess I, I don't go, <laughs> I'm not sure where I go, man, but the training you go kicks somewhere. In. You go yeah, somewhere. the training kicks in, and like you said, man, you landed. I think that's how I went. I mean, I used to get the shakes in the legs after after Same. if it was a particularly scary night, but Same. adrenaline um, dump. Yeah, yeah, and that might be it, man. It might just be adrenaline taking over. You know, it's the fight or flight or whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Your body, your brain's trying to protect you, man. Like you, dude, you don't remember half the night. Landing, Dang, dude, dude, I'm getting. I'm uh you getting a little sweaty. A little yeah, turn the lights out in Donkey's room. <laughs> is that like, a new shirt or is that the same blurry one from last time? Oh, it's your vision, dude. This is a brand new one. It's crystal clear. <laughs> yeah, just like my you shirt. Might get, you might want to get yeah. your VA rating and eye, eyeballs checked out, man. <laughs> this one's fixed. Mover ruins his 40s. <laughs> mover, ruins. mover ruins mover. No. As usual. Next episode, uh, you have glasses. Ben says, oh, yeah. get Casmo talking SA. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. a helicopter. He's oh, a tacky yeah. helicopter. He's got a new show. Go check it out. I think it's tomorrow night on the Tuesday. So awesome. we don't conflict ever. That's good. That's Casmo good. is a great guy. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. That's the end of the show. Another one in hey, the Neil. books. Just on. I see him uh, commenting. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Perfect. So perfect uh, audio visual. I just meant I'm pumped. Yeah. I mean... I learned really <laughs> coming was, to your own. What was the term you taught me? Cruise sock. Oh, dude. <laughs> We're going to end on that? Kids really? Yeah. Gong, she calls the whole yeah. show with absolutely Cruise. no glitches, and that's how we end. That's right. Yeah. Cruise sock. Yeah. 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 Kids go to bed. Don't Google like, that. Tickle me up. Cool. Oh. Yeah, we need to have a contest to name them Wombat's UAP. There. Yeah. Well, here's the other thing I find funny is – Sock was not your worst and most offensive call sign. Okay. That's no, the gonky. best part about it. It's gone. Uh, there was one before Gonky that was. Was there? Do I know Did it? Just start with a C. Yeah. <laughs> was it phonetic? The phonetic for C? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they called me that for a while until I complained about it and it manifested. I've already said too much. Complaining always we'll works with call about signs. A call sign. Trust that. me, Great job. Trust me. Way to be that guy. There's your flow state. Uh, Auburn alum says, "Thank you all for Thanks, the encouragement, Auburn. inspiration." As a dad who was bullied by his own dad, did never take that step as a pilot. That's not good. Yeah, Y'all are refreshing cool. inspiration. My own son now aspires to be a pilot for the Coast Guard. Awesome. awesome. Smartest, smartest. You guys are the fathers. So I'll let you weigh in on how to be a yeah. good dad. Good, good service. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Every Navy pilot kicks themselves for not going Coast Guard, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, no, hey, just continue to encourage him and take him to air shows, you know. Uh, Watch Mover Runes movies. Ah, how old is he? <laughs> yeah. I was say. Yeah, no, but the big thing is just, uh, you know, keeping the fire going. Yeah. Air shows. I mean, gosh, we have YouTube now. You can watch air shows. Oh, right? When I was a kid. You can watch you air know, shows was... from the cockpit. Yeah. 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 So just. You know, uh, it's a, I think aviation is a very healthy, uh, I don't say it, a hobby or outlet. an, adi- or, yeah. Outlet. yeah, it's an outlet. Yeah. It's, it's a healthy yeah. outlet because there's so, there's so much, uh, you can apply to your life with it, right? Because it takes some discipline. It takes some studying. It takes, it takes a certain amount of not much what health, of, health of fitness, <laughs> Um, and yeah, it takes, some realize, money. But... it takes some money too, which is yeah. good. So, um, yeah. but it's yeah, a healthy it's thing, you know, and Hey, if you're, you know, it didn't really deter me from making a lot of poor choices as a young man, but you know, if you know, you have to have a relatively clean record That's to, true. to be a pilot one day, well then, you know, you try to stay out of trouble, you know, don't drink, yeah. don't uh, all that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's a healthy thing, man. It's definitely it's don't go to Oak city on a random weekend advance. <laughs> you might, you might kill something. <laughs> and, uh, Sheldon, thank you. Sheldon. Appreciate thanks, it. man. Appreciate yeah. it. All right. Parting shots before I hit the button. No, no. 
Thanks, good one, man. Again. Thank yeah, you. All. That? Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Wombat. Go buy Wombat's book, trmatson.com. Yep. He buy Mover's books. Up. He can't yeah, say it, but I'm going to say it. it. I could say it. Buy all of them. Yeah. Buy them all. <laughs> Let's get Mover to number one. Wouldn't that just be like, <laughs> screw you guys? I'll so. be number two behind TR Matson. You're just trying to, Jay, you're trying to manage expectations, aren't you? Yeah. Sorry. I just, that, I you guys teed it. You teed it up. bar low and fails to achieve it. That's where I'm at right now. Yeah, so. I don't want people expecting too much out of me. <laughs> All right. Well, good night, everybody. Good night, Thanks, everybody. Douglas. Thanks, Douglas. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you. Bye bye. <laughs>